We're back! It's time for the 2024 Urban Nerd Con. Join us in Atlanta, Georgia, April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel. Special guests include Underworld creator Kevin Grievous, Gary Gray from Fairly Odd Parents, from Nickelodeon, Giovanni Samuels, the Science Machine Michael Green, the Sci Fi Sisters, and from Spaceballs and Star Trek Voyager, Tim Russ. Hi, I'm Tim Russ. Join me April 26th through the 28th at the Cortland Grand Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia for the Urban Nerd Con. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone con. I'll see you there. Live long and prosper. Visit TheUrbanNerdCon.net to get your buy one, get one free badges before the price increases. Remember, our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there. All right. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to a live episode of the ONG Strike Zone. <clears throat> Brian Fulford, Kelvin Rozier, Marcus Green. Pleased to be with everybody on a, another beautiful Wednesday evening. Uh, Kelvin, Marcus, how you two brothers doing tonight? Doing wonderful, my man. Glad to be here <laughs> with you. This is awesome. Thank you for having me. I I, 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 how you like my radio voice, man? I, Mark, I could be, I could be like y'all journalists and broadcast people too. <laughs> Marcus, I, I'm on just, I'm just gonna move on. Uh, how, <clears throat> good lord, how are you doing, Marcus? I'm doing good. It's like a almost like a mini hurricane up here. It's been raining all week. Yeah, but, we got something like that going on here in. Uh, Central Florida as well. I don't know. Uh, how's the weather in Tallahassee? I mean, the whole East Coast, same thing. Okay, so it is the East Coast thing, right? Yep. Yeah. Cold, cold front coming through something. I don't think I saw. Mm. But other than All that, right. good. <clears throat> What'd you say, Marcus? Other than that, good. All right. Good to hear. Good to hear. Okay. Um, Thank everybody for jumping in early. I uh, see a lot of good folks jumped in early. That's good to see. Uh, got a good show planned for you today. Uh, we got a lot of good news to talk about with our spring sports from over the Easter weekend. And and speaking of that, hopefully uh, you gentlemen had a good Easter uh, weekend with your with your families. Uh, hope everyone out there watching did. I, I did. I, I stole all the eggs from the kids and everything. It was wonderful. <laughs> you still, you still doing the egg thing, huh? Still doing the egg. No, thing. no actually, we didn't even call it eggs. Did no. cook and entertain, but no, no egg Easter egg hunts for for us. Hey, I, I saw I saw a picture online of somebody who had. Uh, it was a picture of a uh, 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 some parent's yard that had a bunch of Easter eggs in it, colored eggs, and they were just yeah. like. It, right there in front of you. It's right in the front yard. Just no hiding, no nothing. Just like hell. Get get the eggs, kids. We ain't even we ain't got time to be hiding the eggs and all that stuff. To make y'all run around. Just hear the eggs. Go get them. <laughs> that's it. Just the laziest stuff. I yeah. said, my God. I said that's what it's come to. That's what it's yeah. come to. But um, hopefully, all of you uh, watching and joining us, you uh, you had a good Easter weekend. I know our our Rattler teams did, um, you know, cat chasers, you know, just uh, knocking out, chasing down, chasing down cats, skinning tails, knocking lives off. That's what they did this weekend. <laughs> um, so uh, good to see that. Uh, so on today's show, 
we're going to recap baseball, softball, tennis, uh, get in maybe, you know, track also. Had a, you know, a good good weekend at the Pepsi Relays down in Gainesville. Uh, swag out of the league of the week. Hey, swag out of the league of the week. Swag out of the league of the week. Swag out of the league of the week. Swag out of the league. About uh, what five five us. sports five sports yeah. we hate got us. swag athletes of the week in five sports so we'll we'll go through the rundown of those uh, those young people who who set themselves apart and and that's big time especially this time of the year when you know everybody's you're either you're either in conference play or you're you know on, on that last couple of events heading to the conference championship so it's good to see. Our program's doing that. So coming up at the bottom of the hour, we got friend of the program, Naya Morgan, coming up. Uh, you know, we haven't had the the, the catcher, uh, our softball catcher, the iron woman, as I like to call her. Uh, you know, she's uh, coming up, bottom of the hour. So we'll talk to her about the softball season. The Lady Rattlers are in first place in the East Division after taking two out of three against those uh, Wildcats over in Daytona Beach. Wow, so, Red. Wild rats, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, and so we'll talk to her. And then coming up in hour two, we're gonna talk to a FAMU alum who is uh well, we're gonna get into the, the business of talking about NIL and collectives. Uh if you guys haven't been paying attention, uh it seems to be one of those one of those things that's affecting all sports and you know, say what say what you yeah. want. You know, it's it's affecting the football program. It's affecting mm -hmm. basketball. It affects every college. So, what we're seeing happening at FAMU is not new to college athletics. It just has sort of just now started filtering down to us at the HBCU level. And so uh, we'll we'll talk about that. I know Marcus has got some recruiting news to update us on. We got some. Some football news and stories to talk about. So we got a lot to try to get in in a short period of time. But before we get started, let me encourage everybody, if you can, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. If you're watching us on our YouTube channels, on the Jericho Broadcast Network's YouTube page, that's, uh, of course, my JBN online. Uh, I know that's a lot of you guys are there. We appreciate you there. You can also join that channel as well. We appreciate all your support there the Black College Sports Network. You might be on our own YouTube page, which uh, if you ever want to just kind of catch one of the interviews that we do with the coaches or maybe some special unique segments that we have, you can always find them at ONG Strike Zone, straight and direct uh, without having to chase around. Uh, you can also, if you're watching us on Facebook, we appreciate you watching on the Black College Sports Network Facebook page, ONG Strike Zone Facebook page also might be one of those folks right now on Instagram. We say hello to our Instagram family. And of course, our Twitter fans, our Twitter X fans, let's say, or current folks, our fans on X. <laughs> yeah, don't say. We we'll keep all the fans we have. Yeah, the fans on X. So we appreciate, please follow wherever you're watching or however you're uh, enjoying the show. Please make sure you follow us. Uh, it helps the algorithms. It helps the numbers. And so we kind of continue to grow trying to grow this thing um appropriately you're we your broke best. we broke yes we are so there, there's you can also oh, donate no. you can also donate to the show right there as well hit that cash app or the uh the the uh qr code goes to a square link and you know that that also that also will help us <coughs> excuse me do a few things upcoming as we're looking to try to do some live shows uh maybe from the spring game and then we're also definitely planning um, some stuff going into the, uh, the upcoming season. Uh, we're less than, I don't know, after the, after the Colsey promo I saw, I guess we're, we're under like, a, I know we're under 150 days until the Miak Swag Challenge, man, but shoot, we, it'll be, it'll be August 24th, 25th before you know it, the way things are rolling. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. So uh, let's do what we normally do real early. Let's let's spend a, a few minutes just saying hello to everybody because we, we got a lot to get to. So we may leave a few people out, but, you know, it's all love. We, you know, we we love everybody equally coming in. First off, Ken, good to see you, Ken, checking in before. I think we even logged in. Ken was already in the building, in the room, ready to go. Him and J-Mac. 
Yeah, there it is. Jimmy back as well. Good to see both of you. Um, yes, indeed. How about those uh, battling bats of FAMU baseball? Yes, sir. Good, A good baseball game. We'll talk about that here in just a, a few moments. Uh, Melissa uh -huh. Wilson checking in. Good to see you, Melissa. Bull, good to see Bull. you, Bull. Thanks for coming in. Demetra Thank Alford you. also. Gotcha. Marcus, good to see you, Marcus. Thank you for coming in. Marvin Allen coming in from Duval. Good to see you. Duval. Good to see you. Tamara T also coming in. Good to see you. Appreciate you coming in. Tony. <laughs> Tony coming in. Coming in. Da high. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, let me see. Ashton Harris. Good to see you, Ashton. Thanks for What's coming up, in. We going? appreciate you. Um I'll save that one right there. Mary 305, good to see you. What's good up, to Mary? see you, Mary. Uh, uh, Melanie, Melanie A wins. How you doing, Melanie? Behold, huh? I, that might be might be a Spartan fan there, but it's all love if if it That's is. That's right. Behold, right. the orange and green. There we go. Kenya Sykes, good to see you, Kenya. Thanks for coming in. What's up, New York City Finest? Chuck Hunt, all the way from where you from? Monroe, Monroe, Louisiana. Louisiana. Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, James Austin, I'll go ahead and and uh, I, I I don't know. I was checking today. Uh, the the opening is still open, from what I was told. It's still open, so I, who knows? I might I might submit a resume. Might as Man, well hell. get get on the committee or something. I something something, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm. Have not. There's no truth to the rumors about that. Although, uh, again, like I said, unofficially, we're still trying to determine when the actual uh, closing is for the for the uh, for the position, which was posted. Alex McCullough checking in from West Palm Beach. Good to see you, Alex. Thanks for checking in. Uh, good to see EA. And we'll see what kind of good nuggets EA, EA always got some good stuff to drop in the chat. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. Good to Keith. see you. Keith checking in. Ashley I C guess. checking in. Ashley, I think. Is coming this, up. Is this, is this, yeah, coming, coming up. up. So good to see you, Ashley, checking in. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure uh, a lot of questions that you're going to have about NIL and collectives and all that good stuff. Uh we, she'll be right there. So good to see that we'll get a chance to talk. And there's a hello coming in. Hello, hello. Good to see. Good to see. Good to see. Good to see. Let's see. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Hey, D. Drew. Gail it's coming Gail. in. Gail coming in from Cleveland. Good to see Drew. Good to see you, Drew. What's All up, right. Drew? <clears throat> Oh, it's Carlos Brown, host of the Carlos Brown Show every Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, rather, noon, noon Eastern, 11 Central, right here on the Black College Sports Network. How about those Southern How about Jaguars? about the Jags? That's right. Gave it to them LSU Tigers. The defending baseball champs. Appreciate went, it. Went across, the, went across the street, down the street. I don't know how far it is from Southern LSU, but uh, beat them 12 to 7. Definitely did. Uh, Mac Webb, good to see you. Thanks for checking in. JT, good to see you, JT. Karen Griffin, checking in from Cali. California, eh? Kerry Daniels, Duval. another Duval Rattler, checking in. Edwin Moore, checking in from the Big D. The, the, the antagonist. <laughs> <laughs> well, Give us some know. good ones today, Edwin. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't be start. Don't start too much. Don't start too much. Um, <laughs> don't don't start too much. Okay, so let's get uh, let's get right into it. Let's kind of let's go right into uh, the big the big weekend. Okay, one more for you, Marcus Leach checking in from Columbia, South Carolina. Good to see you, Marcus. Thanks for thanks for checking in. All right, everybody, go ahead and feel free to continue putting in the chats where you're from. Let people. Let the family know where you're checking in from. Um, let's get right into this uh, baseball weekend. Go ahead and get us started, Kelvin, with a little baseball talk because uh, 
the bats were hot at uh, at more Kittles over the weekend. Kelvin, I'm sorry. Is that me I or you? Yeah, okay. that was you. I was, I was trying to set you up. Okay. I was. I, I threw that pitch a little far to the outside. So let me come back with a with a second pitch <laughs> and try to put it down the plate for you, uh, Kelvin. Uh, the Rattlers had a good weekend at home against Jackson State. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and recap that series for us. We got a nice sweep. No, no, Brian. It wasn't a good weekend. It was a great weekend because we were playing those major Tigers from JSU, and we swept those Tigers. All the games were beat down too. They were they were never in it. And, and frankly, the Friday night game, which I was at, I uh, wondered, you know how, because you know they came in with like a seventeen assist record. So I kind of took a look and see who they had played, you know. And our schedule versus their schedule is a lot different. They played a lot of HBCUs, a lot of Russ colleges. Um, they played Valley a lot. They played. Uh, all corn and and you know, uh, Tougaloo and so forth. Confidence building, yeah. Games, as you might now, yeah. they did, they did have a they did have a win against Memphis and um, one other uh, PWC, but you know, I, 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 I thought they were a little bit better than what they looked, and um, they are who we thought they are. If you want to crown their asses, you can. <laughs> But uh, we, so we so the score, the, the score was ten one eight three and uh what eleven one something like that yes uh, 11, so eleven one yeah it it was it was very dominant um we you know of course only gave a what five runs for the three game series and yeah. Yeah. and that propelled us too because Jackson State was undefeated in 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 conference play coming in yep. to us. So we gave them their first three losses. Um, we only have two conference losses, so we're sitting right there on the hills of Bethune, who only has one conference loss on the east side. Prairie View is still undefeated on the west side, but um, we all know the strength of the conference is on the east side. So uh, pitching was, 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 was well. The hitting, of course, was hot. And um, we looked like who we thought this team would be. At this point in the season, we're still fairly healthy. The pitching is solid. We may not have a dominant number one. We may not have, quote, unquote, a dominant closer. But everybody pitches pretty decent who pitched during the weekend. Now, we, we, we throw some different arms during the, the week, the, those midweek games, which we've talked about. But mm -hmm. um, we, we, we've got our rotation. Um. And um, I think everybody's getting into a groove and a rhythm, man. And I anticipate we got a lot of games against Valley, and we got another series at home against AM. We should be able to stack some wins going down the stretch, frankly. And um, Bethune plays Jackson this week. I think they host them while we play Alabama State. So we need to have right. a good showing against Alabama State this weekend. If we come out of this series at least two out of three then um, we off to the races. Yeah. Um, that's the scores from the weekend from the West were just outrageous. I mean, there was like some football game scores, I think from, from some of those games out in the West. I mean, the bats are hot. And, and so it's always, I always wonder whether it's the bats or the bad pitching in the West. And I, and I guess, you know, who knows? I mean, we, we I guess we'll, we'll find out as time, as time goes by and what we see in the SWAC tournament. Uh, Marcus, any any thoughts you want to add in there about the baseball weekend? No. I mean, it turned out really, really well. I, I was the same as Kelvin. I saw the record coming in, and I thought at some point, maybe a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of their hitters was like, I don't know, top in the NCAA. I don't know if it was slugging percentage or, or – um, uh-huh. If it was overall a batting average or what, and I was like, uh-oh, this is going to be a test. Because I remember even last year or two years ago, you know, I thought it was a pretty even game, and then they came in and kind of housed us a little bit. So it turned out much better than I expected in terms of just based on looking at the records coming in, but I think in terms of the performance, 
you know, the hitting and the pitching, you know, consistent with last year as it relates to, you know, being pretty not, you know, shirking back anything. You know, we were going to be competitive, but it, it I didn't expect it to be that the way it right. turned out. Right, right. Good to see. Good to see. Uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think yeah. that might be true checking in. Good to see you, yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, what's up? You know, what's up, Drew? Good to see you checking in. A great weekend. Hey, you guys played a great game the other day. Um, we'll talk about that in just a moment against Florida. But um, coming in off that weekend series, uh, Caleb Granger was the uh, SWAC pitcher of the week. Uh, I think that's like the second or third time he's earned that honor uh, from that game one game of course you can see his stat line right there seven innings two hits no runs no earned runs no walks which also i think is always important i think he hit one batter but uh when you look at no walks and then 10 strikeouts 10 and strikeouts. 95 pitches and 95 yeah. pitches that that's efficient work right there and he got a lot of help from uh from from the guys at the plate in that game as evidenced by that 10 to 1 score um and you can see there Caleb was a swag pitcher of the week uh, for fam. And so that was, uh, and then, like I said, uh, two, now let me see, I got to get my days right because I was not at work on Monday. So Tuesday, let me see, Monday night is when Southern played LSU, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And so we had an opportunity uh, against Florida, the, uh, the next, the next uh, day on Tuesday, and uh, man, we gave we gave Florida all they wanted, no doubt, man. And it uh, you see a few of the in game highlights from this game, uh, which I mean, if you didn't catch this game, and I tweeted this out earlier, so um, hopefully, if you guys didn't get a chance to watch this, we got off to a great start right right off the bat in the first inning, had a couple of good hits. Um, Right there, um, you can see, uh, you know, even though Ty got picked off there at at uh, third, uh, we still managed to to get some hits off their opening pitcher. And, uh, of course, then I believe here comes uh, the big blast right here by Adam Hatermoto as a uh, – as uh, I think is that is that uh, is that uh, is that Germany who does the uh, who does the uh, the in game PA at the uh, more Kittles? I'm not sure, Brian. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I guess that was a good imitation. Time, yeah. Every time she's like Adam Hater Moto, and uh, so anyway, good three run homer to get us started. And uh, we jumped on Florida three Ooh, to nothing. That's right, down the pipe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Florida did answer back, though. Uh, they Dang got him. us. Yeah, they, they answered back. That was the one thing that we had trouble with a little bit. I think I saw the stat where we may have hit, like, six or seven guys from Florida, you know. And then uh, – Seven. Six, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, there was – there was. I think a lot we, – we, we didn't have – that fifth inning kind of hurt us. Um, but, uh, there you can see, we kind of gave up that three run homer, kind of tied to allow them to tie the game up. But, uh, but, but, you know, Brian, the, the problem wasn't the homers. The problem was the hit batters. Cause that put bat, uh, people on base. Mm -hmm. If if it's just a one run homer, it don't matter. But the fact that, you know, we had, I think we had five or six hit batters. And right. so, so that's really what did the damage. And the other thing, I wanted to ask, and maybe you guys recall, I thought there was an upset last year, not us, but an upset maybe the day before or the weekend before. I guess we're probably playing a conference game. And I don't know if that put Florida on upset alert, because I want to say sometime last year, maybe two years ago, someone else in the SWAT upset someone, a PWI, and then basically, you know, they were ready for us. So I don't know how much to, to a degree that would have had any impact versus. I, I don't know if that's, I, I, I don't know, Marcus. What I would say is this family team is really good. Mm -hmm. 
they are capable of going to when, when they play up to their potential. They are capable of going to a regional should they win the SWAT tournament and um, winning a regional because we have those kind of bats, you know, and we have a, enough good pitching where I, I, I think, um, you know, they, they, they have a chance. We, what they need to do is just continue to play ball, stay healthy, and um, stack up some W's right now. Mm-hmm. And as we talked um and that's what show, I'm expecting. Yeah, and as we talked before the show, uh, we gave Florida some run last year in the regionals. And I want to say what was it one run game? Was it one to nothing or like two to one or something like that with our ace pitcher starting the Friday three, game? Three zero. Three zero. Yeah. But it was really, really tight. Yeah. And then the second game yeah. was was tight as well on Saturday, the elimination game. So it's not as though we're shaking in our boots or we don't have the talent level to complete to compete with Florida. Just a matter of just making sure we don't make key mistakes at, at times and, and, you know, keeping it close. I mean, when you're playing someone that, just like in March Madness, when you're playing someone that has advantages as it relates to perceived talent, maybe even real talent, slight advantage, and slight advantage in uh, facilities, you know, if you keep it close, the close the longer stays close later, you know, they get a little shaky. You have to see if they uh, got that poise at the end. Yeah. So uh, as you can saw, the final score was 10 to seven. Uh, we had to lead a couple of times in that contest. Um, we out hit Florida uh, yeah. 13 to eight, which I think is the real positive sign. In all of that said, we out hit them 30 to eight. Uh, four Rattlers had multiple base hits in the ball game. Um, uh, let me see. And Bastardo Adam, didn't play, you know, we we didn't we didn't have, you know, everybody. We didn't play everybody. So yeah. No. It was a great, it was no. a great showing. Yeah, it was, it was a good start. First three innings. I mean, we scored. Uh, obviously, you saw the three in the first, the two in the second. We scored another in the third. Um, got away from us a little bit in the bottom of the third when we gave up four runs. Um, we were down, let me see, uh, six to eight. Well, I, actually, you know, we were up six to three going into the bottom of the third where, you know, we kind of had those couple of hit batters and it kind of got away from us in that bottom of the third. Um, we, we got it back to a one run game in the top of the sixth. Uh, I think that was, uh, that was the home run by, um, that was, per- let me see. No. Yeah. That was Perini's home run in the top of the sixth. Uh, but the seventh and eighth is when, uh, they kind of increased their lead with a single run in those innings. So, um, Rattlers are now 12 and 17. Uh, seven and two in conference play, just sitting, what, a half a game? A half a game behind Bethune, who is still in first place by just a half a game. But this, as you Kelvin just said, a big weekend series is coming up as we take on Alabama State, who is currently in fourth place. And Bethune is hosting Jackson, and that's first versus third. So the top four teams – you know, literally the top four teams in the East, and I'm, you know, all respect to the people in the West, the top four teams in the swag are playing this weekend. I'm I'm just going to say it that way. So we're all playing. So we'll see how it comes out. We'll see how it shakes out. So um, it'll be a good, good series um, this weekend. It is a home series. So we got a lot of activity going on at home this weekend. Matter of fact, it's like, I don't know whether this was purposely planned or not, but it's a, Alabama State is coming to town in not only tennis, softball, but baseball as well. So it'll be a good weekend uh, to us to kind of bring out the fly swatters and uh, bring out the bug spray and take care of the Hornets uh, at every field and court that we're on. So there's a little extra incentive for you guys. You want to bring some stuff out to the ballpark, bring out a big fly swatter and a big can of bug spray. And uh, let's go ahead and take care of business with those teams. Let's get ready to take our first break yes, hey, on the other side. Hey, one, one other thing. Baseball, there's a fundraiser for the uh, 2023 shirts. 
Um, and that fundraiser is sponsored actually by the FAMU Alumni Baseball. So it's, it's a fundraiser for the baseball program. So uh, we we need to get that on the um, the link up and so folks can see that and get those orders in. I've ordered my two. Okay. Um, I yeah, I wish you would have told me that, uh, or I would have thought about that earlier. Uh, I don't know if anybody, if you've got the link, Marcus. Or if Kelvin, if you got the link, if you can shoot me the link to that in the chat, and then I'll I'll post it so that way it goes out to all of the uh, all of the text feeds. All right. So uh, yeah, and I think the deadline is the fifth. You got to pre-order those shirts. The deadline is Friday. So uh, just a, just a heads up. But coming up after the break, we're going to talk about the other big series on the diamond, and that's our softball team. And of course, we're going to talk to a friend of the program, Nia Morgan. The Iron Woman herself behind the plate. We're going to talk about the team, talk about the season, and uh, we're going to see how what it feels like to be sitting in first place. The the hunted, probably still the hunters, but definitely now the hunted. Nobody's sleeping on FAMU softball anymore. So we're going to talk to her about the season so far coming up after the break. You're watching the ONG Strike Zone right here on the Black College Sports Network. If you think all pads are exactly the same, Think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, Visit us today to take charge of your learning. Okay, welcome back to the ONG Strike Zone. Uh, Brian, Kelvin, Marcus, and I think I just, I think it went through. Did I put that uh, link correctly? It did. The, uh, okay, it went out through. Um, so, of course, that's through realwordsapparel.com. That's the link you can go to and get the 2023 FAMU Baseball SWAC Championship shirt. I'll show the, the screen grab a little later, but I don't want to keep our Iron Woman holding much longer. That's right. It's our friend of the program, Naya Morgan, FAMU Softball's own. Naya, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Hey, it, it's we're blessed. It's good to have you on. It's good to have you on. Uh, so Naya, you you got to you got to tell us now. What what is it? You know, it's, it's been a while since we talked. Uh, you a grad student now. What's uh what's what's grad student life like? Before we get into talking about you know, softball, what's what's life like as a grad student now? It's very busy and demanding, honestly. 
Both. Uh, tell, are... tell people what, what now what it, what is your uh, what are you what is your major? What are you studying right now? Um, I'm getting my master's in occupational therapy. Okay. All right. All right. And finishing up, finishing up the career, getting the getting the masters and everything, and staying busy. Um, so look, this 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 season, you uh you were coming off of uh coming off of an injury, if I'm not mistaken, right? Coming off of uh the end of last year, I think it was. Um, and uh you started this talk a little bit about the off season and kind of just getting getting healthy and getting right. So uh going into the start of this season. Um, it was a lot of work. I think I was doing um, two a days with rehab and then doing rehab at home just to get my grip strength and stuff back. Uh, I ended up breaking my fingers. So it was just a lot of... You say said multiple, right? Multiple, not just one. Good Lord. Yes, I broke two of them. Oh man! Well, we, we... that's what happened. Hey, that's what happened when you play every day. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I we, mean, she we caught, I, every, caught every game last year, right? Every inning, yes, every sir. every pitch last year. Uh, that that's why we call you the Iron Woman Knight. Because I mean, what you what you did was like, I don't I don't I, maybe other people do it. I don't know. You you in the sport? Maybe that's what catchers and other programs do. But I I just found it impressive that every pitch you you caught uh last year what what's uh so look let's get into this season i mean what what were some of the your thoughts and the expectations in the off season with with this team honestly we have a whole bunch of um new girls so i didn't really know what to expect nor was i trying to figure out what i wanted to expect i was gonna let the season go how it's gonna go regardless but i really do love these girls they're very good bunch of girls they're very talented athletic all of that what you need to create a swag champion okay okay and, and you and you're the you're the veteran now you're the i'm not gonna call you that i'm not gonna disrespect you and say you're the you're the old you're the old head <laughs> on the team but but you, you're the savvy veteran now i think right you you and maybe a couple other uh teammates have been there the longest if i'm not mistaken yes sir it's probably about six of us that have been here for a while. Okay, okay. Uh, go ahead, Kelvin. So, talk about what has what was has happened to make you know make what has gone right. Why are we in first place? Um, and what will it take to sustain this through the rest of the season? We're in first place because we play as a team. And everyone um, understands their role, where, whether it be in the dugout, in the field, whatever the case may be. Whether you come in off the bench to fulfill a role, everyone gets the job done. So I think that's very good for us to have multiple people that can get the job done. And as far as winning the SWAC, we just have to keep playing as a team. We have to lean on each other when times may get hard and persevere. And as far as you personally, um, I, I know we have some other catchers on the team, so you didn't have to catch every and then you've been able to do some other things. Do you have a preference? Is, is there a position that you like more than the other? Just kind of talk about, you know, your role on the team um, this year. Um, I have enjoyed the – little time off that I do have from catching. Um, I, <laughs> I, wouldn't say, <laughs> I wouldn't say that um, I have a position I enjoy more. I just like being on the field. So yeah. wherever that is. Okay. All right. Awesome. Good stuff. Go ahead, Marcus. Well, thank you, Miss Morgan, for joining us and accepting our invitation. I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first one, uh, I guess, how's the team health? Uh, the second part is, what would you see it, say is the biggest difference compared to last year at this point in the season to this year? And third, if I recall from my notes from last time you were on the show, you had a puppy, Pookie. How's Pookie doing? 
<laughs> so going the, deep <laughs> the first question. <laughs> Could you repeat the first question? <laughs> yes. How's the team health? The team health is great. Um, we have a bunch of bubbly souls, and that's all <laughs> that for a team. Um, they're all kind of young, which keeps the older people alive, which is good. We need we need them for that for sure. Older people. I love the way you said that. Older people. Older, older people. people. I, they I, have so old, I, older people. I, I felt old right there. For some reason, I hey, felt Brian. old. In that hey, statement. Brian, what are we? I, <laughs> really, really they older have people. older people. We're we're much older people. <laughs> and what would you for compared to last year at this time, I guess say early April and to where you are now, what would you say is the biggest difference? Um, we have a lot of grit. We're wanting to get the job want done. Everyone's wanting to be that one that's gonna get the job done. So I think that helps a lot. Um with everyone wanting to be that one, because in turn, you will be that one that gets it done for the team. Okay. And how's Pookie doing? I do not have Pookie anymore. Um, what? One of, one of my teammates actually has Pookie. I had to give him away because my program is very demanding and I didn't really have as much time for him as I needed to have. Hmm. Well, thank you for answering. I'm question. glad it's a. I'm glad it's a good. I'm, I I was worried there for a second when you first said it. I'm like, oh my god, Marcus, what have you done? I'm like, you you asked an open ended question with that. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, no, I was a little worried too. I was like, yeah, there's some some unhappy endings with dogs. I didn't want to open that door, but I wanted to ask. <laughs> um. Naya, you uh so just looking at some of the stats now, you're you you're second on the team right now in terms of batting average, uh like uh right there among the tops in terms of RBIs. Um and uh you know, you you you're having a good year at the plate. You feel like the you feel like the, the maybe the slightly reduced time behind the plate is is helping that um what what are you contributing to some of your success right now at behind the or at the plate rather hitting it could be that or it could also be just um how old i am i realized like that this is gonna be it so i'm wanting to do as much as i can but not putting so much pressure on myself to do it because i do have teammates behind me that can gotcha gotcha um, I saw you a couple weeks ago, you earned a uh, swag hitter of the week. Um, but, um, of, of all of the accomplishments, whether it be yourself or the team, what are you most proud of so far, uh, from either yourself or this team? The, for the team, I'm proud of their perseverance. The fact that we're when we've won every series, even though mm -hmm. despite a loss that we may have had in the in the series, the fact that we're able to get through just that one loss and not make it two. Okay, okay. Um, let me obviously, you know, one of the one of the big, you know, news or big news events for FAMU softball was uh, the naming of the field. You know, the Veronica Wiggins Field, and you all were. You know, you got the first win on the field that day. Um, talk a little bit about what that did. You know, we've heard from, you know, former players, uh, Iria Young, who's in the chat room. Shout out to Iria for joining us. Um, and, you know, we, we've obviously heard from a lot of the people. But from a player's perspective, what was that moment like for you and your teammates watching and being around the alums and just all the supporters of Coach Wiggins. And just talk a little bit about that weekend and just being a part of that moment. It was very heartwarming um, to see everybody out there to support Coach Wiggins. Me personally, I wasn't able to have the opportunity. Sorry. 
That's all right. Might Sorry. be might be a grad grad student classmate. Might have some work. We understand. It's all good. You're a busy woman. Don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> um, I wasn't able to have the opportunity to play under Coach Wiggins, but being in the atmosphere of people that have played with her and um, even Mia on our team also played under her. Kiana, her sisters played under her. So um, having that experience there, even though I did not get to play under her, she still thinks of us as her own kids. So that was great to have her heart full for the field being named after her and us being able to have our first win on there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, Kelvin. Do you all talk about, does Coach Patterson, do y'all talk about that rich tradition and history that FAMU has in softball and being able to uh, get back to that and and, and to to hold hold that standard? Is that a part of uh, uh, any discussions you, ha you all have internally? Um, we touch on it. So the um, our assistant coach played under Coach Wiggins. So she tells us a lot about the history and what it was like to play under her. And Coach P tells us a lot about what it was like to coach under her. So. Uh, any goals? Any, hold on. Any, any goals uh, that, that you set out for yourself individually for this season? Um. For it to be my last season, I think my main goal was to be the name on the billboard. I wanted to be that person that could be relied on by the team to get whatever it was to be done. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Mark. Marcus. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Looking back at the notes, do you still have a desire to head out to Texas after you finish your degree? Um, not really, no, just because it's very far away from my family. So I want to find somewhere closer. Um, when I get into my clinicals, I'll probably do them in uh, Orlando and North Carolina to be closer. And with occupational therapy, just give me a little education on that. Is that specifically dealing with sports or recovery injuries, or is it more general public, or is it a combination of both? It's everything. Everything, because um, occupations are something that everyone has, whether it be gardening or cooking. or So it's really a broad area. I could step into sports if I wanted to, but... Um, it's a broad area of what you can do. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, Naya, let's get it. Let's talk a little bit about this weekend series, uh, where, where you all took, uh, took, uh, two out of three against Bethune. There you can see the first two games on, we, we got a three, two win, uh, had to go eight innings, uh, is that my seeing that right? Do we go eight in that one, or we got we got that one? Yes, yeah. Sir. You had, so we had to go. We had to take care of that one in game one, three, two. Game two, the first part of the doubleheader was, uh, you know, we, we lost that one three to one, and then game three. I'm telling you what, that seventh inning. I mean, we're down two zero going into the seventh. I mean, I was stressing. I'm looking at the stats, and I'm <laughs> like, oh my god, what the, you know, of course. <laughs> Thunes, raggedy uh, internet service and all that stuff. It stopped working. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't, don't get me started. I'm get hate. Um, but uh, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't listen to the game. So I'm just watching the stats. And then just take us through this series. Um, you know, let's let's kind of start on on the Friday on the Friday night and and just how intense these games are. I mean, all close games. One run, two runs. I mean, until we open it up. In the last inning of Game Three, I mean, it, it was it was a nail biter in almost every inning as, as it went by. Yes, so that first game, um, we generally try to secure that first win of the series, but um, really, Bethune only scores if you make errors, and we had a couple errors that game, which led to the two runs that they have on the board, but. Um, 
we had more hits. So we out hit them in that game and were able to squeeze out that 3-2 win. For the second game, um, our bats just weren't going. They have a new pitcher, and she was getting the best of us that second game. So that's honestly how that unfolded, and they outscored us. The third game, um, our bats weren't going at the beginning. As you can see, innings one through six were zero runs. But <laughs> inning seven, um, we started uh, – they put a new pitcher in, and they they put the new pitcher that pitched against us that second game, and we just had her number for that third gotcha. game. They they thought they were gonna squeeze her in there, and they're like, "Oh, she handled us in game two, so he's like, oh, we'll we'll throw her out there and we'll close this game out." Didn't work out as planned. Didn't work out as yeah. planned. Um, what's that momentum like when you tied that game after seven? When you're going into that eighth inning, what's what's the conversation like uh, amongst uh, you and the team going into that eighth inning, the top of the eighth inning, tie game two two? We were just saying not try not to do too much because when you're trying too hard, then stuff doesn't happen. So we were all telling ourselves this is zero zero ball game again. We just need to hold them in this inning and then come back and let our bats talk. And that's what we did. But one person, all we needed was one person to get us started, and then we could keep it going. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. And uh, you know, speaking of those, those, you know, those two ladies, those two teammates right there, uh, Samantha Smith, uh, Zoriana Hughes. You you catch both of them. What talk a little bit about them because both of them right now, I think they trade off every week in terms of who's swag pitcher of the week. One week is yes. Zoriana, the next week is Samantha. Then Samantha says, "Now nah, I'm gonna do it with the bat." Then it's Zoriana's turn. So talk a little bit about those two, those two, uh, those pitchers that you're catching from. They are Catch two completely different pitchers. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam works more east and west and drop balls. Zoe is more east and west and rise balls. So it's good to see a different look with both of them, especially to hitters, because both of them are new to our field. So mm -hmm. they're All very right. good though. They're very good. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. We, we, you know, Zoriana, I think uh, looking at the stats here, eight and two records so far. Um, you know, obviously we know what Samantha does. I think she's six and eight, but I think in conference though, she's probably got a, a real good record in, uh, Samantha also does it at the plate as well. Uh, she, yes. She's a, yeah, she does it at the plate as well. Uh, any last questions, Kelvin or Marcus there for Naya? What's the key mm -hmm. to this weekend series? I think the key is for us to stay within ourselves. So play family softball, do what we know that we can do, and we'll succeed. Okay. I love it. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Marcus, got any last uh got any last questions? No. No, I'm good. Oh. All right. All right. We Marcus, you you got the notes, boy. You be coming, you be yeah. you finding any the, more research. Any, any more research, Marcus? There and I'd be like, man, I don't even remember telling about my dog and all the other kind of <laughs> stuff, Let me check. Uh somebody <laughs> who who is Naraya Lee? Uh they keep asking us. She's an outfielder for us. She's an outfielder for us. She's an outfielder. Okay. Us. Yeah. Uh, Jens P said, I'd never see her without her laughing. I, what type of personality? Who's the personality in the, you know, obviously you seem like the, the, uh, the, the reserved focus teammate, <laughs> but who's the, who's the personality? Who's the personality in the, in the, on the field or in the clubhouse? We have a lot, a lot of different personalities, which is good because they always keep us laughing. Riley is one of them. There's, um, Sam is actually very hilarious. Bree is funny. Naomi's funny. We have a lot, like, I can't look at anybody on our team and say they're just not funny at all. Everyone brings their own 
their own funny to the team. Their own energy. <laughs> Their own so, thing. so I do have one more question. Who's the chant leader? Who comes up with the chants? Who's the one that always get everybody going? That is Mia Blasting Game. She is that girl in the dugout. She is rapping, freestyling. Like she'll get us all hyped. It'll only take one cheer for her to do it, and she'll freestyle at the end of it, and we're all in the game again, ready to go. All right. Well, nobody. I, I don't. I don't care what anybody else in the swag says. Nobody chants like uh, that. The lady rattlers do. Boy, I tell you, when when y'all get going, y'all get going. So, uh, it, it's it's good stuff. It is good stuff. Uh, okay, family. Uh, this weekend, Alabama State again. It's a big weekend. FAMU versus Alabama State. A big weekend. Uh, the Hornets are coming down practically in every spring sport. It seems like. Uh, so we got them this weekend over at Veronica Wiggins Field. Friday, 6 p.m. is the uh, contest, uh, the mat, uh, game one. Game two and three, of course, are the doubleheaders on Saturday, 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. So you got plenty of time to move from field to field. Even on Sunday, you might get over to the tennis courts. Uh, so there's plenty of time to float around and, and support. Uh, this team. So, uh, Nia, I give you the last word. We always love talking to you. Uh, any last words, final shout outs, or anything you want to want to share with Rattler Nation? Thank you guys for having me on the show. Uh, I want to shout out all my teammates who are watching, any friends, family that are watching, especially my dad. You know, he's always on this platform. Absolutely. Yep. We appreciate and it. Rattlers, Go Rattlers. All right. All right. Uh, Y'all make sure to let Naya give out this, give out the social media handles. Naya, you know, I let people know where they can follow you, where they can find you. Um, Instagram underscore Naya Morgan one and another underscore. All right. Instagram uh, is where you can find her on Instagram. So, all right, uh, Naya, we appreciate you. Um, we love talking to you every time we get a chance to. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, have a great series. Um, good luck with the studies. And, uh, you know, let's, if we, you know, we, we got the fly swatters and the bug, bug sprays. They'll be, they'll be out. So we'll take out the Hornets and uh, clip those wings and stay in first place this weekend. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Take care. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Naya Morgan, make sure to friend of the program. Uh, always good to have Naya on and talk to her. Um, and um, Marcus, I thought you would have followed up honestly with finding out who has the dog. I thought that would have been like the serious <laughs> follow up question. I know you didn't want to yeah. dig too deep and say, "Well, who's got the dog now?" You know, come on, is the is the dog the mascot of the team? The the team, you know, so somebody's got the dog, but you know, the, good to know that the dog is doing well. Mm -hmm. Uh so good, good, good job. Good job. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and take our next break again. Uh that softball team right now, 14 and 15 is the record, 10 and 2 sitting in first place. Weekend series against Alabama State uh starts this weekend. Uh, just in case you did miss the news, uh Zoriana Hughes, co-pitcher of the week. Uh, she went 2-0 and on the mound, two complete games versus Bethune. Um, she pitched 16 innings, had a 0 0.88 ERA, only gave up two earned runs against uh, Bethune. And uh, so, again, Zoriana, I think that's like either the second or third. She She's in the run. I'll tell you what, if I just did stock on who's won pitcher of the week, I unofficially, I think she's won about four of them. I'm just unofficially. Somebody else can do the math and tell me if I'm right or wrong on that. But I just unofficially, I think she's done it about four times now. So um, definitely having a great season uh, for uh, the Lady Rattlers. So um, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Uh, any final any any final thing on softball before we uh, hit this next break, guys? No, sir. Uh, no, they're doing it up. They have a good mix. I think softball and baseball have a similar type makeup where they have like a big, not a big age gap, but they have seniors with experience, grad students with experience, and talented underclassmen. 
So hopefully it bodes well. All right. Good stuff. Well, coming up on the other side, let's uh, let's get into talking about some NIL and <clears throat> what uh, what what's the future look like? What the future could look like for FAMU as it relates to NIL and collectives and just all that. So we're going to talk to to Ashley um, coming up on the other side. Um, so let's go ahead and take that break. Don't go away. Don't don't go don't go too far. I know a lot of you have some good questions coming up. You're watching the ONG Strike Zone right here on the Black College Sports Network. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Brian Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. I'm returning to Clinton, Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the law office of Clinton, Paris, we take the pain out of being hurt. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. All right, uh, welcome back to the ONG Strike Zone. Brian, Marcus, and Kelvin. Um, while we're talking support, uh, hold on, let me find it here. I always like to show this. For those who aren't aware, make sure to hit up the uh, Rattler Athletic Fund. All right, uh, make sure to donate and support. I still have that women's basketball account code there. You know, we we had on Coach uh, Coach Gordon a couple of shows ago, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, $60 to, to match those 60 points scored in the SWAC tournament. It's never too late to go ahead and make that donation and support uh, that women's basketball program. Uh, I keep seeing a lot of big-time players in the SWAC in the transfer portal and I'd be stressing every time I look and see fam, you hadn't talked to him yet. I, I I trust the plan. Look, I trust the process by Coach Gordon, but I'm like, man, sure it would be nice. Uh anybody talk to that Simmons girl yet? How about that Pete girl from UAPB? Anybody talk to her yet? I'm 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 just saying, you know, I just I want to see some instead of seeing news about people leaving, I want to see some people who might be interested in coming to fam. I just this Yes, sir. We want the team. <laughs> yeah so absolutely yeah all right so there's the uh rattler athletic fun all right let's bring in our next guest uh our next guest and we're gonna get ready to uh uh talk to ashley coleman here ashley welcome to the ong strike zone how you doing this evening Ashley? hello hello i'm doing well how are y'all doing today 
Doing hey, good. Doing well. We're doing well. We're doing well. Okay, so uh, so Ashley, why don't we uh, why don't we start with a little bit of background, a little Rattler background about you, and uh, you know you uh you are a, a I think the word, what's the right word to say in a, a, a two time grad from yes. FAMU, uh even an I think an SBI alum as well. So absolutely SBI all the way. All right, there you go. <laughs> uh, so so give, give us a little background about you, where you're from, how you got to FAMU, and and uh, what what are you doing now? Um, well, my name is Ashley Coleman, like you've already stated. Um, I am a two time graduate of Florida AM University. I'm actually from Tallahassee, Florida. I graduated from Rickards High School. Um, so basically played sports all of my life. Um, leading up to college, I did not play at FAMU. Um, I, I played leading up to college. Um, decided to come to FAMU, um, stay home, come to FAMU. I mean, why would I leave with the best business school um, in the country? So I came and, and found my way into SBI and made my home there. And after I did um, my graduate uh, undergraduate program, I went away and did some work and then I came back um, and came back and got an MBA from SBI again. And, and in between that, I got a master's in marketing from Full Sail University. Okay. Okay. Right down here in uh, Orlando where I'm at, Full Sail. Yeah, that's did, right. uh, did, you, did you do the, uh, I'm just curious, did you do the online track uh, with Full Sail or were you actually down here? Uh... Um, oddly enough, I did the online track. Um, I lived in Tallahassee when I, attended full sale so i did the online track oddly enough i live in orlando now so i'm here um doing the opposite so i'm a, i'm an orlando uh, uh i live here now so oh well that, that's so we, we definitely gotta uh connect offline yeah, we, then. Do. we do we need to connect definitely definitely all right um so let's kind of let's get into talking about obviously what's been heavy in the sports college sports environment is name image and likeness okay um and um i i don't know how to set this up so i you know i know so maybe i'll let's let's kind of start with what's your perception or what do you see of fam you currently as it relates to nil and what what is fam you missing what are we not doing let's maybe start there so I, I've had the opportunity, I'll, I'll answer your question this way. I've had an opportunity to speak to some of the athletes, majority football players, and um, just listen to their concerns in reference to NIL and where we are and where we could be. So what I'll say is that NIL pertaining to FAMU, we, to be honest, let's, let's, let's backtrack to last season. We'll, we'll go as, just, just last season. We had, um, our program was, very stable, right? We were we the two years before that we had not won championships, but we were had winning winning seasons. We were kind of like, you know, tra tra upward trajectory. Then we got to the mountaintop last season, and and if you think about it, we did all of that without NIL, right? Well, NIL had not necessarily trickled down to our space. It, it was very prevalent. It had become prevalent in the Power Five rankings, even G Five rankings. It had not come down to the HBCU space. So we kind of got away with it um, for that long. And, uh, and, to, and, and from my perspective, two things happened. Number one, we won a championship. And there, yep. and, and nobody went to get to the mountaintop and doesn't expect elevation in some way and some type of recognition and some type of yep. what, do I, what do I do I get for this? That, that's one thing. Um, another thing is that NIL came like a rushing mighty wind because if you this, this is the way I tell people when I talk about our athletes and I'm going to stick with football for now. If you pass it into the caliber of the players that we recruited in coach Simmons and his regime recruited in a lot of them were power five players, even G five players. We didn't go and take another, uh, uh, you know, we might have took a Bethune transfer reporter or Jackson State here and there, but for the most part, they were coming from Marshall. They came from Minnesota. And these universities were already providing LSU. They were providing some of these things that, so the, some of our players were just used to some of these things. Now, of course, you come to FAMU, you come to an HBC, and you, and you do understand that the resources aren't the same, um, the ability to do things, um, the money doesn't spread as far. So they understand that. But I try to tell people, 
um, alumni, fans, anybody I get a chance to speak to that love family and want to see us grow, we can't compete with our counterparts. On the field, we do. And in, on the basketball court, we do. But in the caliber of athlete that we intend to bring in the family from academics, from, from ca character to abilities in athletic space, they are honestly, um, by, for all intents and purposes, above our field, meaning Power Five. So if we're going to compete with Power Five on a recruiting standpoint, we have to come as close as we can to what is to be offered. And not to mention, I'll say it again, we won a championship. And I heard a player out of his own mouth tell me, we did what y'all wanted us to do, is to win a championship. So what, so, so what is it in return? And the best way to show them in return is, number one, you want to show them, do the fan love. You want to show them that we appreciate them. But NIL is the closest thing that we can do as we as it speaks to our resources. It's the closest thing that we can do to show our athletes that they are valuable because I'll tell you another thing. There are other schools that are offering these same players money and resources and facilities and things that we can't compete with, at least not right now. I believe we can if we if we get a right strategic plan in place to, to go aim at it. But we're just competing with with the, with a higher caliber athlete. I'm sorry, a, a programs that have the resources that we lack. NIL is the quickest, easiest way to be in competition. And one another thing I'll be, make clear is that these players love FAMU. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to know on behalf of those players that are in the portal. I've spoken to them personally, so not all of them, but some of them. I'm not going to call any names, but they love FAMU. But it's very hard to turn down some of the things that they're being enticed with. They're 19. They're 20. So as FAMU Rattlers, we have to get in the game. Just like, what is it, EA Sports? Get in the game. We got to get in the game. And it doesn't take a lot. Um, before, before I throw it to you, Marcus, I think what you just said there is for some, for some folks, it's yeah. a different yeah. – it's different hearing that. Because for so long – uh, the same way we've talked about doing more with more because we've always heard, oh, we're FAMU, we do more with less, right? Right. Yeah. And so that mindset of, oh, well, we'll do it, you know, you do it because of all these non-tangible things, right? Right, right. It, that's not today's, that's not, it's like the, the, the floodgates have been opened. They open wide. And <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, either, yeah, either, either you <laughs> Either you jump in the pool and swim or you drown. It's just that simple. Mm. Marcus, Lo go, go ahead. Hey, just let me oh, just yeah. add loyalty, loyalty and commitment are different for today's generation than our parents' generation. You know what yeah, used exactly. to get a job? You get a job and you stay on a job 30 years, provide for your family. That do not exist. It we does have not. So we we have to change our mindset, and, and we you know is we and we shouldn't be upset about that, you know. I agree. If you we need to Things don't. Yeah, th things going to change. All right. So I'm sorry, Marcus. I just wanted to make no. that point because I know some old heads watching that don't like oh, yeah. this conversation, but we got to have I, this conversation. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Go ahead, Mark. Uh oh. Ashley, thank you for coming on, accepting our invitation. I actually have a, quite a few, not really, or I guess some questions, some some things bouncing around as it relates to NIL. I guess first and foremost, I, I know you and I have talked offline, and there's been some kind of, I don't know, what's the word, um, mixing of NIL versus collective. And if you wouldn't mind giving us some clarity there to understand exactly the difference between the two, but how they are in sync, but two different things. And the other was that, um, and I was thinking about this earlier today and bounced something off of Kelvin and Brian. A couple of years ago, when I had a chance to do the signing day for BCSN, talked to Hugh uh, when he was, his first year of Grambling. And I asked him if if having NFL experience and dealing with free agency would give him a leg up coming into college. And he thought, he said emphatically, are we to that point now where we're looking at an NFL or professional type model as it relates to how we manage, deal, and 
secure players or at least a collegiate facsimile of the, the professional model. So I know that's a lot, but the first question, explain the difference, the difference, but how NIL and, and collectives go together and then where we see this going based on some of your conversations and what you've seen in the greater landscape. And this is kind of also open to Kelvin and Brian based on what you've seen. Okay. Well, NIL in its purest form is literally what it says. You're, you're getting compensated for as an athlete for your name, your image, and your likeness. So let's just take an example. Uh, we can just use Jalen Glaze as an easy example. He had he had someone go into Krispy Kreme on his behalf, an NIL agent, not necessarily a sports agent, but an NIL agent, a, also marketing agent, um, who brokered a deal for him with the NIL, with the Krispy Kreme um, organization that they would use his name, image, and likeness to then sell donuts. And then he gets um, a portion um, of the proceeds from those sales, specifically when you order the specific Jalen. We can't just go in and order a dozen donuts. It has to be based off of the Jalen Glaze, for example, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, to, the way I view it. That's the purest form of NIL, right? Um, the player gets the compensation and it's not always money. Sometimes it's merchandise. Sometimes it's um, airtime. Sometimes it's a free hotel night stay. It could, it's different compensation um, models. It's not always financially putting dollars in the children's pockets. Not, I'm sorry, not children, athletes. They're young, young men and women. Um, but that's the purest form, right? You use your name, image, and likeness. The business said, hey, let's work together. Let's partner. And you'll promote my 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 product or my service, and in return, you'll get a kickback of it of some sort, whatever we agree about, right? So it's like a collegiate version of an endorsement, like a professional it's endorsement. Exactly, it is it's the collegiate version version of an endorsement, right? That's nil. So then then came in shortly after came in this whole model of collectives. Now collectives kind of started obviously uh, in those power five rankings with those big dollar boosters who who had the money to do it. So there, there are different, actually different forms of collectives. You have a, a donor-based collective, which means that that donors put money into a collective and the athletes who are signed to the, to the collective, and I don't like to use the word collective anymore because it has a negative connotation now, but um, we use it for all intents and purposes today. Um, but you have big donors who own businesses. They um, have the dollars to put into the collective. Um, and then the athletes that are signed to are then agreed to uh, be sponsorship or representation of the collective and community-based um, involvement, they should be, let's be clear, they should be doing mm -hmm. that because every everybody doesn't do that, but it's not a pay for play. So there's no reason for any athlete to be getting paid just because they're on the team. They need to be doing um, content creation for this collective. They need to be promoting the merchandise that the collective as an organization may sell. They need to um, work with the businesses that are sponsored through the collective. So there are many ways through a collective that an athlete can work in a sense and use their name, image, and likeness for the compensation instead of the negative connotation of, oh, you just got, you just raised a lot of money and you just paid them so much money. So I, I get that because there are people who abuse it, but it is in, in the grand scheme of things, it's not 100% like that and, and everybody everybody's collective is different so that was a donor base then you have a marketplace based collective where it's literally just what, what it says as a marketplace so we come together all the businesses perhaps alumni based businesses local businesses regional businesses even national businesses who pay sponsorship dollars and then the the athletes in that collective then go out and do sponsorship ads and posting maybe social media commercials for the business in the marketplace. So if, if I'm in the business and I have a tire shop and I decide I want to work with an athlete from, from FAMU, I can be a part of the marketplace of that collective. And I say, hey, I want I want to work with Kelvin Dean specifically. And I come in and Kelvin Dean does a commercial for my tire for my tire shop. That's that's the marketplace form of it. And that's also closer to the purest form of NIL. And then some people do dual collectives where they actually have a donor base area of, of their collective and they also have a marketplace and i like i personally like the dual um collective mainly because it gives you an opportunity to get the athletes in the community and use their name image and likeness for compensation in that manner but it also gives them an opportunity to work with businesses and um get them it, it becomes a marketing agency to be honest 
Okay. You had a you had a follow up too. I don't know if you want to come behind me with that, but you also had a follow up question about. Yeah, how yeah it's kind of to you and to the broader audience. We can maybe talk about it a little later. Because I don't want to hog the time, but basically, are we moving in terms of recruitment, especially those who are in the portal, or are we basically moving to like an NFL or like a professional sports free agency? And do we are we do we need to equip our staffs or expand our staffs to include? the type of people who are used to dealing with negotiations on the professional level in the collegiate ranks on a coaching staff? Well, we, if you're referring and specifically referring to NIL, you have to be careful because the departments um, cannot be involved um, heavily. They, they can endorse, they can kind of say, Hey, yeah, you know, we support what, if XYZ Collective is doing, but they cannot have real involvement. So putting someone on staff to me would be more about like kind of helping them get to the next level, like a player development type of role that helps them either get to the next level professionally in the NFL or CFL, UFL, or they help them to grow to be whomever they need to be um, in the future, whether that means that they need to financial literacy, they need to learn, get their resume better. So professional development and personal development in that way. Um, as far as recruiting is concerned, you have to be careful because as of right now, you cannot use, you should not be using NIL um, um, deals to recruit a player. Although if there's a collective that's widely um, publicized, if there is, um, if, if, the, if it's obvious that the players on the team are, are at a particular school, are getting deals, then there's a high chance that if I go to that school, I can get deals as well. You know, it's kind of indirect, you know, dangling it in your face. But as far as like specifically saying, hey, come to FAMU and we'll give you X, Y, Z for, for you know, we, you shouldn't be doing that as well. So there, there are a lot of rules and regulations. It's, it's, it honestly is the Wild Wild West in a lot of ways with NCAA. Um, but there are, I, I like to err on the side of right on anything I do actually or anything that I'm a part of because I, I just don't like to be in trouble if I don't have to be. So me. <laughs> Stay in the guidelines um, that were previously. Right now, people are like, oh, it's a free for all because the NCAA is in, in litigation with no, because they're the powers that be. On our level, we have enough problems. We don't need to bring any more issues to our front doorstep. Let's just do it right. Let's just, you know, walk the straight and narrow. If, if we're going to approach this that way and stay and stay out of trouble. Um. Kelvin, I, I know I've got a question regarding collectives, but Kelvin, go ahead. I want to I want to see where you where where you're at with your with your questions for Ashley. I love this conversation. I love your information, number one. And I want to get into how the sausage is made. So I kind of need to know because I'm it's not clear to me. Uh -huh where the university athletic department itself stops with these things or what role, how far can they go in directing the student athlete to these who sets up the collectives? Um, I heard, I heard an agent, I heard a uh, X, Y, Z who's, re who's regulating when you set one up. That's kind of my well, question. Well, we, that's why I said it's a wild, wild west because those are some good questions. So truth, the truth of the matter is that we have multiple athletes that already have NIL deals in some way or another, or, or that you just have it. You will see in the next couple of weeks. I'll tell you that now. Right. And it did not require Coach Cozy or Coach Gordon to say yes, or even our compliance. They, so really, in the grand scheme of things, you don't have to involve the athletic department and say, all right, well, who's in charge of this thing and who's running this thing? The truth of the matter is, and this is just based on my research and based on the, the people that I've spoken with about this, there are a lot of alumni who just love their school because this is a love and a, and a care space. You're not you're not awful. getting rich off of this it's by a, any means. It's a love. It's a love offering. I was trying not to say a love. <laughs> <laughs> but oh wow! That's exactly where I was headed. It's a love offering. So the work you do. Now, an NIL agent, that's a totally different person. They, they almost act as if as a sports agent for who, who, who does contracts. They're no different. But a collective is nine times out of ten, probably ten times out of ten, and a, an alumni member who pulled in a bunch of alumni and said, hey, we can we can make, you know, we can be in this game together. 
Um, on the larger scale, there are like the people who own the corporations. There are the ex-athletes of these schools. Or on, on other scales, it's just a bunch of alumni who care enough to say, we can crowdfund. We can do group economics because we all are alumni. We all love FAMU. Let's use our own school. We all love FAMU. We, we don't want to go back to losing. We're at the mountaintop of winnings in, in football. We're headed in the right trajectory in basketball our tennis is doing well our baseball we're, we're the swag champions there like we have a lot of good things going from our athletic department so we can't again when we're good and we're winning somebody's watching and, they, and they're just waiting for the opportunity to say hey well come over here because this is not happening so back to what you what you asked originally is almost always an alumni group and then the rest of the alumni that don't maybe don't have time but still believe in nil or maybe um, don't really have a desire to put in the sweat equity, they, they might be the ones who might join the membership. Or they may say, I'll give a one-time donation. Or they may say, I'll bring my business in and my business will, will because your business does benefit from this um, if you do it the right, if it's done the right way. So uh, what I will say about athletic departments and who regulates these things, um, the comment, the courtesy is that you go ahead and speak with the compliance. That's the courtesy of it, that you ought to speak to the compliance. And the best thing to do is to get the buy-in so that the synergy is there. You don't really have to, but it works better when you do. And if you're an alumni, you ought to love your school well enough and deep enough to say, I don't want to do anything that puts us in jeopardy. I don't want to do anything that puts my department, because this should, doing a collective or anything in IO, that, that's the basis of it. You want to help the athletes that are in your school, you want to help them for retention purposes if once they're already in the fold. Okay. Um, last question, Brian. Where do you yeah uh, last question, Brian? Where where would one go if they want to support or of find out about fam you student athlete collectives uh so forth? Where do you oh, go to find that information? That's a good question. So right now, um, it's coming down the pipeline. And when I say coming, I mean like in the next very, very extremely, very soon, that it's come down the pipeline as a centralized location to help and support in one way or another student athletes, right? If you were tomorrow to wake up and decide that you want to um, support an athlete in I with the NIL, honestly, you'd honestly have to go directly to the athlete because the centralized location is not technically available. Um, a lot of our athletes um, are they are dealing with one individual who as an NIL agent who is not an alum of, of uh, FAMU, but he's, he's a Tallahassee native. His parents are alums. His, I think he has a sibling that might be an alum of FAMU. So he has a connection, although he's not a direct alum. So a lot of our athletes are working with, with this that gentleman. But um, there is a centralized location that's coming and there will be multiple ways to be involved that does not require only one way for you to be involved. So. We do recognize everybody won't love it and care about it, but the ones that will, will. Mm, absolutely. Love it. So, so I, I got, okay. So lots of, lots of questions and thoughts here. Um, I'm, I'm going to go one at a time because Marcus, you may have some add-ins too. So something you just said about a centralized place for people to go uh, who want to do something right now with NIL. What's your evaluation of Rattler Local Exchange? I believe it's the uh, influencer-sponsored program that <laughs> FAMU Athletics promotes. Uh, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, we've got a, a, a our moderator, Dr. Lori. I think she's used Rattler Local Exchange with the – and I, I don't know, Doc, you're in the chat room, so if I'm wrong here, please say so. Um, I think that's who she has used at the benefit – of her business, but also supporting to FAMU students. What's your evaluation of that? And and you you didn't you didn't mention that, so I, I want you to kind of talk about that. What how to, what what is not working with that particular system in your evaluation? From my experience, um, I went um, I actually saw someone a while ago tweeted and asked about nil and the ad mentioned in the local the influencer local exchange. And I'll be honest, I went and, and unless I did something wrong, I, I signed up and I didn't get a response. So I can't speak for anyone else's experience. And maybe, like you said, Dr. Lori, um, maybe she got a response. And, and again, it could have been a user error on my part, but I did not get a response. So um, 
I, yeah. I've seen that. I've seen that. I, I don't think it was you. I've seen that tweet. So I don't know if that was you, but I, I know I've I'm seen not, that I'm happen to somebody. Causing, I'm not blaming anyone for anything. I actually blame myself. Use the error. <laughs> Look at you being trying to be good. That's all right. Yeah, I got to um, be good. Correct. I, I know. I know. <laughs> um, but okay. So, but what we do know of what influencer is or what Rattler Local Exchange is supposed to do, it's supposed to be the middle, the middleman for businesses over here, student athletes over here. And it's like that bridge. That's what it's supposed to be. Yes, because I know Influencer is one of those companies that they promote this bridge between the business community and student athletes. But I mean, it, right. it, so yeah, is, is it just, it's just not working right now, I guess. From my experience, I didn't get far. So okay. I, I'm not sure if that's other people, other experiences. Um, and um, yeah, I, I just didn't get far. So I don't, I don't really have much I can speak on in reference to that. I would love to get to know more about the influencer and how it could benefit and how it can work in tandem even. Um, because the, the, the NIL opportunities that I'm aware of that athletes ha are getting and have gotten um, have come from individual agents who have kind of given deals rather than through it right, from my knowledge. Research. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'm not sure. And and I'll just add it. I, I'll say what others may not. Hey, I'll say what others may not say. So I know some folks, you know, and it's good that, you know, you have people that you know if, if you direct them somewhere that it's going to be followed up on because you only got once or twice to deal with some people, right? Right. There, there are people There are people in the community who want to partner with our athletes. And I don't have someone that I know of, and I'm considered somewhat connected, that I can mm -hmm. hand off say, hey, this is my guy. I'm giving him to you. The uh -huh. deal is done. All you got to do is follow up. So I will. That's why what you're talking about in terms of having a centralized place and maybe a particular contact that I can send send these contacts to is important because mm -hmm. this is not it's not what I do. And though I'm somewhat informed, this, uh -huh. it ain't what I do. Yeah, it takes a it takes a lot of education, a lot of research, um, a lot of. Um, communication and conversations with um, stakeholders, um, other alums, those who, I mean, even is, is you're essentially building up a business without any, the return on investment is the program and the alumni um, and the overall department doing well, but that's what love does, right? So yeah. if you love and your heart is in it and you see the, and you see how it can work um, and benefit our athletes, um, one thing I'll say for sure is that all athletes, and I'm not speaking specifically to any one athlete, but all athletes don't get full scholarships. Correct. Some are walk-ons that play. Some are half scholarships. Some only get paid for books and books and classes. So these kind of things really do help the athletes um, bridge the gap. Now, is it our responsibility as alumni to pay for scholarships? And, you know, no, absolutely not. But as alum, we should support our athletic department. We should support our university educationally in any way we can. And this is a way we can do it. Um, I know there are many of the older individuals, and I'm not just going to say older, but there are a lot of individuals who, who are skeptical, who don't necessarily believe in the process. But you'll see how this will work, and you'll be made a believer. Trust me when I say that. There are businesses that want to be involved with FAMU. There are businesses, believe it or not, that, that want to be connected to, to our athletes. And I know yes. that for sure. Kelvin is yep. attesting to it as well. Yep. So if if and I'm I, I keep going back to this Rattler local exchange because again it it's, it was designed to be the bridge. So if the bridge has cracks in it, is that what has allowed an agent? I'm not like I said. I, I'm I'm not going to promote anybody or put any names out there. But if we have an agent in the Tallahassee community who's benefiting in this way is that in large part because this exchange is not doing what it should be is it because the athletic department is not promoting the exchange or making sure it works right why is it why is that and i i, I why is that able to happen or is it just a product of the marketplace 
I think it's a little bit of a, all that you said in some ways, but I do think ultimately it's a product of the marketplace because if, if FAMU had a centralized location tomorrow, just popped up out of nowhere and all the businesses flooded in and all the money flooded in and athlete can still decide to independently work with an agent an NIL agent. And, and they have agents, just know that they have agents working on their behalf, which is, which is a side conversation, but it's also how they're able to, to be shopped to other programs. That's another conversation, but it all ties into NIL and, and trajectory to your to your future endeavors. Do I want to go to the NFL? Do, where do I want to be end up? And can fam you get me there? So um, I think it might be a combination of all. Um, I, the influencer, I, I, I would love to learn more and be able to use it. I have not been able to. And I'm actually I'm glad you're speaking on it because it puts it back in the top of my mind to kind of kind of figure out how to get access to it. Once I didn't get a response, um, I kind of just moved on. Like like Kelvin said, I kind of have, I have things I want to give to FAMU and the athletes, but it, it, I've been blocked, <laughs> right? And I know people who want to. So when I was unable to get access for whatever the reason was, I kind of just moved to another avenue of how to get the job done. That was just my personal experience. So um, I, I that actually puts it back on my mind to go back and, and kind of dig deeper into what might have gone wrong with with the access to it and if it can be you know put together um marcus did you want to you want to jump in with a question uh the, you want did you want to get in there with a, with another question or thought because i i wanted to come back to the i had a question about the collective stuff for a second but go ahead uh i do and actually kind of a refresh on something that's that's already been discussed either on this show and you know in conversations with ashley previously um well, I guess one, I guess the first, if you could flesh out, you're uh, speaking with a lot of, of information and insight. Mm -hmm. And if you could elaborate, if at all possible, uh, your level of involvement in what's forthcoming, you, if you can elaborate on that a little bit, just so folks can have that comfort level. And I know you and I have talked and we've talked on, on the program that there's been a lot of initiatives, a lot of things that have started up. And one of my personal challenges, the two things. One, there's always, and we just saw something this week where somebody on Twitter spouted off about the mouth about HBCUs taking money, and then she got swatted yeah, down yeah, because yeah. she was she was spreading falsehood. But there's always that trust factor with money, like what you gonna do with my money? And you know, you right. deal with churches, and there's a church building fund, and ain't no building go up in 20 years. You know, something like that. And then there's the other right. thing where my personal thing is, I. Us Rattlers have a lot of energy and we create initiatives, but if we create so many different initiatives, to me, it creates what I call market confusion. Like, okay, which one do I give to? And there's a, the Pareto rule, like 20% of the people give 80%. So if you don't know which one to give to, you don't know which one to trust, which one is actually doing what they're going to do, how do you quell any of those perceptions by those who may want to invest, not only from a trust standpoint, but and if there's like 8 billion initiatives started with good intent, but there's so many, there's only so many initiatives you can give to. Right. And, and, and I, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that's something that has, you know, been cons of a, of a, I won't say a concern, but of something to, to consider. And number one, um, the trust factor is very important, right? Um, anytime you're dealing with anybody's money, you're dealing with, college students who could be vulnerable in any way possible, you have to be careful, right? You, it, that's, that's, that's not good PR when it's not handled well, um, as well as the trust factor that may not even all the way be there just gets even worse, right? So um, from the trust factor, I believe in transparency. Um, just from a background standpoint, I, I worked in banking as a start out, like, I, I don't have any choice but to any compliance in that area. So I don't have really a choice. And like I said, I don't like being in trouble. So from my personal standpoint, there there is not a time where I'll take advantage of someone um, because I, that's just not who I am. And you have to find people who care, who are genuine, who are naturally honest and not being made to be honest um, and do the right things when people aren't looking. Um, probably learned a lot of that growing up playing sports, being um, a point guard, being a in the band and being a leader, you have there's an image that you portray, right? And your image and then turns or turns around and helps your credibility and your trustworthiness. And I am will be heavily involved with the central location, um, and you'll see more of it. Heavily involved, 
Uh, so what we intend to do is just be transparent. Um, and, and the work will, will speak for itself. My grandmother, 95 years old, and says, let my work speak for me. Um, and that's something that she believes in. That's what she raised our family on. So my works will speak for me and my name means something to me. So you won't catch me putting anything, any dirt on my name. So, and when you're that kind of person, you have to surround yourself with those kind of people. Yeah, you, you know, you got some bad apples and you have to weed people out, but you just have to be honest. I, I mean, it's just not hard to me. Like, just be who you are and be honest and be upfront. Tell, do what you said you were going to do. Treat people how you want to be treated. Be where you said you're going to be. And if, and if for some reason those plans change, be upfront about why they change. You know, simple as that. And I think that's all we want as people, even on a larger conglomerate from above FAMU as, as a group of people. That's how we are. And then when you, when you narrow it down to just FAMU, that's how we are. Like, and, and you know what showed me that? When we decided to put our money and our efforts together to help keep keep Coach Simmons. Mm -hmm. Coach Simmons had done enough for the program that we trusted that things would do well. And it went to an area that we trusted as, a, as an alumni base, as a group. We unified and we trusted that things would be done well. Now, I, I'm not speaking for what else has happened, but in that moment, we stuck together and we believed in each other and we trusted the process. Did the process work out how we wanted to? No, but we trusted the process. So to me, again, transparency is probably the only way that you can build trust for someone that you've lost. And even if you started out with trust, you still got to be transparent and honest to keep the trust. So uh, it's not hard. I'll be honest. For me personally, it's not hard to be honest. Like I'm probably too honest, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the way, I love the way you said that. Um. <laughs> The relationship between, and, and I'm going to get to my question in a second, but the, the relationship between collectives, as I've seen in the, I'm just going to use that Florida State because that's immediate okay. and close by. The relationship between their collectives and their athletic department and even some of their head coaches, even some of their mm -hmm. star alums is tight. It's good. Well, yes. Yeah, I, yes. I know they had, put it like this. I know they had, I don't know if they're down to one. I know they had two and then they consolidated the one or maybe one took over the, the sec. I don't, I, you know, it's they're, down, they're down to one. They, okay. they came down, they're to down, one. down to one. So they used to have two and then everybody kind of merged and said, no, nah, this, this one over here is we like what they're doing and how they're doing it. And everybody's on board is something like that. A goal of, the collective that you are, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting your name on this. So if I'm wrong here, <laughs> speak out. but the collective in which you will be a part of is, is having a, you mentioned, of course, going through the compliance department, there's that aspect, but also yeah. it's bigger because if you have your head coaches, coach Colsey, coach Gordon, uh, coach shoot, whoever our future basketball men's coach is, and the the athletic director, if all of those people are supportive of this collective, synergy. the yes. synergy is there. So it's yes. it, I'm assuming that is a goal of what this collective will be and do, right? That's that is the ultimate goal for it should be the ultimate goal for any any group of uh, any collective. I, I, I decided that we're going to call it the NIL group, by the way, because everybody wants to, to, to bash on collective. So we're an NIL group. Let's call it oh, that. OK, well, NIL. <laughs> all right. So. All right. So, yes, the ultimate goal is to have coaches, the athletic department, athletic director, um, compliance, all in one centralized step. I recognize we have booster group, the boosters. We have the 2020 quarterback club. We have the NAA who all have efforts and do things um, differently, depending on what the fundraiser right, might be, depending on what the initiative and what the focus may be. Right. But just like you said, Florida State, I, I watched them very closely. Um, the Battles End is the name of their um, collective. And their the football coach endorses this. Right. So that's about as far as they, they can. They can endorse. The athletic director can endorse if she likes it and believes in it and that kind of thing. And, and we've kind of took the first steps to for the conversation in the compliance department that, that should lead to, to the higher up. But as far as the coaches, it behooves honestly, just 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 honest. It behooves the coaches of every sport and the athletic director, as well as compliance, to be in step with the right process. Of if somebody comes in and says, hey, 
let us handle this process for you. It only helps. Not only that, something that people may or may not realize is that if if there is some violation going on, the program is going to be liable yes. or maybe the athletes. So it behooves you to pay attention to what some someone any one NIL person is doing as it pertains to your athletic department, just to make sure that you are, you know, you know, what's going on. Something as simple as sending over a contract. If an NIL agent does that to the compliance and say, Hey, I just want to make sure, you know, this player is, is in, has decided to be in contract with this business. Okay. Let me keep it in a folder. Let me read the contract and make sure no one's being taken advantage of. So it's small things like that, that the synergy is 100% necessary, although it's not required. So you can move, like I said, we have multiple, I, I, I was in the chat, maybe not the last today, but last week. And I saw some people who were not, um, who were kind of skeptical. We'll put it like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And whether they believe it or not, it's happening. Like okay. you just hadn't heard about it yet. <laughs> like full on signed contracts, doing commercials, shooting commercials that you will see. So it's happening. So why not get control of it ahead of it and make it work for us? And that's called synergy. So yes, there are a lot of we have we have a lot of initiatives, and it does back to what Marcus said. It it could feel chaotic, right? Um, to as as a supporter, like I only have a hundred dollars. How am I going? Who am I gonna give my hundred dollars to? And you sit around like, okay, you 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 know, I get it. But to that, I think that as an alum, you have to decide what's important to you. Do your best to give to all of them that you believe in, and take it from there because the NAA will always be asking individuals to join. The booster club will always ask an individual to join. And if, and if that's the case, and if you think about it like that, so will the 2020 club, you know, who does great things, you know, for, for our athletic departments and different initiatives. So sometimes I think we think about it in the case of, well, we only have so much money to give. We only have so much energy and effort to give. You know, so, Either you're gonna spread it out over five places, or you're gonna just focus in on one. And I don't. In in, in my perfect world, booster club, any type of NIL um, group, as well as the, the NAA, all work in in conjunction. If that means that at the NAA convention, there's a segment to, to just talk about NIL. That that doesn't require money. That's not asking anybody for money. But what it does, it shows unification. Yep. So it's things like that that can take it to the next level. We we have more than seventy five thousand alum, and somebody tweeted me and said, "Well, what about are they are they all dead and alive?" And I'm like, you know, I didn't think about this. people who are may not be living. Like, I didn't even think about that far. But you got a point. But nonetheless, we have way too we have too many alum to to scrape over the twenty percent. Now we know that the twenty percent is in any organization, church. Anytime you fundraise, it's going, it's going to end up being a 20%. But what's 20%? Is it 20% of 75,000 or is it 20% of 10,000? And, and how do you view it? And if you show the work of what you're doing and, and, and the proof is in the pudding and, and the people can believe and get behind it, then that's okay. But I can guarantee you that you don't want to see another one of our athletes getting that transport quarter. And I can tell you that NIL plays a part. It's not always the case, but it plays a part. Um, I'm I'm so glad you said what you said because mm -hmm. one of my questions was leading into that distribution of dollars. It's kind of mm -hmm. I think I may have, I may have mentioned this last week on last week's show. Uh -huh. If I had a hundred dollars, and I said if I only had a hundred dollars a month to give to FAMU athletics, where would I do? What would I do with it? Would I would I cut it into five parts? and send $20 to this group, $20 here, $20, $20 there, because that's going to be the question that a lot of people are going to ask. And you just you just talked about that because, yes, we, we are familiar with we have the Booster Club, which is supposed to be, supposed to be, supposed to be the direct <laughs> – uh, can I say that one more time? Supposed to be the direct fundraising arm for the athletic department. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You have now you have the 220 Club, which is a a, a strong donation donor donor group, uh, which supports many programs and athletics. Uh, you have people's ability to donate directly to a program through the foundation, right? Uh, those mm -hmm. are. Uh, am I missing a DSO there, Kelvin? What else am I missing? Boosters, alumni, foundation. NAA. 
the NAA, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. the NAA, which yeah. helps all FAMU students. So right. most people, are, you know, so those are the primary four that we're familiar with. And the one thing I keep telling people is as great as those four do, and, and outside of the NAA, which affects and helps scholarships, it's uh -huh. the only one that goes directly to a student. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong there, Kelvin, because the NIL group, if I am said the name right there, Ashley, <laughs> would be able to go directly to a student and not necessarily the program. See, when Coach Gordon came on and talked about needing to shoot away, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's what the boosters should be doing, in my opinion. Right. That's what the 220 club should be helping to do, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right? Not mm -hmm. necessarily what the NIL group. I'm not speaking for you, but I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? And so so mm -hmm. I think yeah, there, there's differences there and being able to educate people about how those differences work. Like, for example, okay, so so I'm a am I saying all that right? Because I know there's some great questions in the chat, and I wanna I wanna open up. To, to ask you some of those questions, Ashley. Because okay. I, I, okay. I, I'm, I'm, I think this is what we should do. The, education is the key to this NIL space uh, for everyone. Um, we are, this is fairly new to us. It's fairly new to a lot of people. There's, there's always going to be skepticism on something that's new and it doesn't always feel good because we're used to doing it whatever way. So again, because I'm not afraid of questions. Um, I don't mind answering anything that I can. And the answer that I don't have, I will go find for you. Just, just as simple as that. Um, but can I give you an example really quick? You, you had you yeah, had my mind going when you said something sure. about well, if I got a hundred dollars, how can I split it up in a however many ways? And it and when you said that, it made me think about um back to the tweet I said. I made a tweet that said if we had 10% of our 75, well, let's take that down because maybe some of them aren't living. Um, but if we had 10%, figuratively speaking, of our alumni base that were willing to give $25 a month for one year. That'll take us light years ahead. Twenty five dollars. Right. So now for your hundred dollars that you had, you got seventy five dollars to take wherever you want to take it. Now, that's that does mean that everybody needs to put into, you know, come in together, and make it work because we can't just have 10 people doing the twenty five dollars. But if, if we all believed in the method and the process and we did something to the to the nature of well I'll split I only have a hundred extra dollars a month that I can that I'm willing to give towards anything based family based okay these are the things I believe in as simple as that nobody gives anything that they don't believe in so to me mm. the simple thing is I believe in the booster club I'm giving my money to the booster club I believe in NIL I'm giving my money to NIL I happen to believe in all of them you know what well that means I'm gonna split it's just like your kids like you got five kids. You're going to give one of $100 and the rest of them just walk away with nothing? No, you split that money because that's what's important to you, if you're trying to be fair, at least. So, you know, that's just an example. But those are ways that if you don't have a lot of to, to stretch out, fair on the air on the side of I donate and I give my time, effort, and money into the things I believe in. I think Ashley said all that needed to be said. But I'm going to throw in a, a, my little twist because I see some folks in the chat saying mm -hmm. some things, too. And I want to center it around what you propose about your limited resources and the, how you spend them. And Ashley is dead on, in my opinion. There's just some things I don't believe in and I'm not going to give to. And it's OK. We're not going to cry about it. There are things I don't believe in. Right. Boom. And, and you can't expect, and you can't say, well, well, Bobby Jane over there won't give us any money, but she gives all her money in AA. Good job, Bobby Jane, because you're still paying to, for, paying it forward to the betterment of our university. We That's are right. not here to compete. We are not here to, to, to have any strife or any Say it problem. again. Say we it again. Compete. It is. We are not here to have strife. I don't believe in that. I don't operate like that. I don't live like that. That that's that's Pat, that's so Pat, that's so important Pat, because the Pat's you know the Kelvin the line the lines <laughs> will get drawn by some people somebody will yeah. want to make this pass the play the, the, this is this, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you I believe in myself that much I told you I play sports I'm competitive and I and I work in sales I, I believe in me you don't have to believe in me today you don't have to believe in in the initiative today but you will 
And you still may not get what you'll believe. Because you'll see the you'll see the efforts that are put. That's so right. it, I'm just confident in that. It, it I, that's why I'm not concerned about questions. It and that's why you don't have to worry about what you know. I'm just confident, and, and it's just what like I'm very serious. It it does not phase me one bit. I, I've been coached all my life. You can tell me no. You know how often I got coached and chewed out about making the wrong pass playing basketball. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't phase me. I'm just being honest. Like, this is who I am. This is who I've always been. Um, I, I strive to, to treat everybody nice. And, and you know, everybody liked me when they finished talking to me. But if you don't, the feeling was probably mutual to begin with. All right. Let, let's go to a few questions. I think there's a few good ones here. I've tried to star some of the best ones that I can. I'm going to start with this one from EA because I think this is this is a good litmus for the sort of the, the the questions that are going to be out there. And um, he asked, uh, let's see, uh, EA asked. Um, uh, I like that question. I like yeah. that one. How can, you, like how, can, how, can, how can you offer NIL and don't have a locker room? Limited trainers, no nutrition slash training tables. Take seven to eight hour bus trips to games. Help me understand. And overall, what I think he was saying in a couple other tweets is, the focus, the lack of a focus and attention on facilities and upgrades like this versus doing NIL. So I, I'll let you, that was, I, I seen a few other tweets, but, but go ahead, Ashley, your thoughts there. Um, what, what I can say to, I think EA is a gentleman. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, to Mr. EA, I am 100% in agreement with you in that. Um, and I, I have considered what some any one or two or three people may say, well, we don't, we are, we're losing, missing resources in other areas. And I agree with you, but that's why we have individuals in, who get paid the big bucks to do it. Bam. To the people in the back. Uh, I think she said P3. I think she said, uh, for the athletic campaign, things that we've talked about on this show. I'm not here to I'm not here to say any call anyone out, but as an NIL group, the NIL group is based off of name, image, and likeness, not facilities, nutrition, and football practice. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, so, and to add and add to that, that, yeah. And to add to that, you can have a short term, you know, and long term in that. Right. And you guys mentioned earlier, I mean, short term in may go on for whatever have on the lines is nil now because we're right. losing players we're and losing there's, there's a marketability that we're losing ground on because of the nil but long midterm long term could be could be facility upgrades they don't they can be done in parallel they don't have to be sequential or in right. series and so, to be honest i'm go sorry ahead. Go ahead. no go ahead so i just wanted to say that is that I mean, yes, I mean, we've had some we have deficiencies and comparative to whomever, whether it's our peer group or G5s or whatever, in terms of facilities that would help us enhance that. But you can't wait around for that. We've been waiting yeah. around for 30 years to get brag updated. Hey. And, get the hey. Hey. and so let us get better bathrooms. And, hey. and, and if you don't and even the locker room. So if you wait for that and say, well, we can't do our NIL because we haven't done that first then we're going to be even further behind, but at least put an initiative and a plan to work both in parallel. Right. And, and if you remember, um, EA again, back to you, EA. Um, if you remember from the beginning of the conversation, when it started, we have to do what we can do now. You're so right. When you said now we have, how many players have we seen going to portal today, yesterday and last week, right? So yes, facilities play a role, but I can assure you that that's not that's not as important as that NIL. And we heard our AD say that last week. Yeah, that's not that's not going to run them away quicker than, than a dollar being offered down the street will, right? So yep. it's important. Facilities are important. I'm a, I'm a strong. If you saw my comment I made today on on the um on the 2020 quarterback club watching watching along. If you saw my comment, I literally spoke to facilities because there was a young lady on there speaking about how she went to university. It was the University of Florida, and she she was so amazed at all the different things that they had um, access and the way the facilities were built at their after the facility, and she loved it. And I was like, "Ooh, I really, I was getting excited because I'm like, I'm hoping that 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 we are seeing things." But one thing I would like for, to ask our community, our alum, our fans, those who love FAMU, is to is to open your mind, right? Yep. So someone said we have to multitask, and that's exactly right. 
There's a short term, there's a mid term, and there's a long term plan for everything. And believe it or not, I've already donated to nutrition, right? On behalf of an NIO group that y'all don't even know about yet. Mm. Mm. So, okay. So, with that being said, we multitask and we can, but we have to sure. start somewhere. And we have to start and immediately attack because, again, we are losing players left and right, and April 15th will be here very fast. Oh, yeah. And one thing I can tell you that the players are empowered. NIL has given power. It's a combination of NIL and transfer portal because, to, in my opinion, and this might go off on a little tangent, but imagine if there was NIL with a little bit and, and the portal had not opened up the way it did. Because the portal kept for many years kept athletes in one place. Either you couldn't transfer because because of the time frame, or if you transfer, you had to sit out for a year and it wasn't worth it to you. Now you can sit out and play immediately. You can stay within your conference and play immediately. Before you couldn't do that. So the the portal rules kept things into this type of box that stopped a lot of this. So it's not all nil. That is the is all nil is just destroying college athletes and and, and the whole landscape. It changed the landscape. But I'm going to tell you, it was a combination of the portal and NIL together. It opened up the floodgates of empowerment. Yeah. Well said. Yep. Well said. All right. Another question here. I think I think this is a good one. This is going going to that trust factor that a lot of people have. Uh, B. Starks asked, "What well, upcoming? Uh, we'll, we'll call it. It's called the NIL group. Uh, okay. Uh, to go through the the foundation for donations to be tracked for those that give. And I think maybe that's a question." centered around transparency mm, go ahead I, <laughs> I know the answer but i mean i won't ask I, I, I won't i won't speak to that directly um because that's a part of the transparency that will will it'll be forthcoming how the, the transparency of, of that process as far as directly through the trend through the foundation or will we do like any other business does and does like quarterly things of that nature. Um, so I, I, I do believe and I, and I, and I know that most people who, who might even consider supporting an athlete through NIL wants the transparency and there is a method to do that. And I can't today right now say that the foundation is that method. I also can't say that it isn't right. So we have to, the, the, the goal is to pick the best method that works, that provides the transparency that directly connect, goes to the athlete. Cause that's the ultimate goal that like anything that you do, gives directly to the athlete, um, yeah. and that's it. Um, it it's yeah. nothing more, nothing less when it comes from the NIL standpoint, right? So I, I'm sorry to say I can't really say yes confidently or no confidently. We have to um, explore that, and that'll be forthcoming information that you will be will be readily avail available to you so you don't have to question. Are Isn't there a difference with collectives being nonprofit versus profit? I, right, is that it is. It is okay. so that that's that speaks to the to the to the donor led form and the uh, marketplace form. Marketplace <laughs> is more like more than likely a, a for profit institution because you know you you you're maybe selling merch to people who like merchandise. Like you know we love our family merch. I have on something right now. We all have on something family, okay. right? Yeah. So yeah. so a collective could literally and there is a name for the NIL group. It's just not been um, acknowledged yet, but yeah. the name. Yeah. The name, image, and likeness of the collective can sell a visor, yeah, his own merch, right? So that's yeah. the for profit portion of it that still goes to the player. And then on the non for profit is where the athletes get to go out in the community and you know, whether it be from the from the donors who say, This is what's important to me as I donate, can you please have these athletes go to the boys and girls club or go to um, you know, diabetes foundation or whatever the case may be. So the nonprofit, non for profit portion is generally that. A lot of collectives do that, but all of them don't. Some of them are strictly, you know, for profit and, and some of them are separate. So it just depends on how you choose to do donor based as opposed to marketplace based or, you know, that type of thing. Uh, also sent around that uh, with the foundation piece. I know there's fees and, and certain things that the foundation, how they operate that may or may not be beneficial in an arrangement like an NIL. So I, I know that has to be considered. But I think the question that was being asked earlier that you spoke to that I would like to, you know, have a clear answer on, and I think you kind of hit on it, but I want to make sure I heard it. 
Okay. Is it is it can it be tax deductible? Yes. Okay. Yes, it can be tax deductible. Um, as long as you have the 501c3 um, designation, is absolutely tax deductible. And that's what's attractive, honestly, to a lot of businesses and individuals who give at high dollars. The tax deductible part, I mean, you're giving to your school directly goes to the athletes. You may have your favorite player or you may not have a specific player, but you want to enhance the um, athlete's um, experience. So it just depends on how you do it. But, yes, it can be tax deductible. Okay. Uh, here's another good question. Steve okay. Campbell, Mr. Campbell comes in with a good one. Um, he says that most schools now are using a clearinghouse to review contracts and opportunities. How are the players going to be cleared to use FAMU trademarks in promotions? Uh, and he's referencing something that he had to, to, uh, use in dealing mm -hmm. with, uh, Jackson state. Well, to be honest, um, that's something th the licensing, I'm, I'm going to assume he's headed towards the licensing of like the logos and maybe getting like content in an actual jersey as opposed to not being in a jersey. So you have to be careful if you don't have an agreement. And I actually read earlier today, I was looking at FAMU's um, NIL rules. They actually have FAMU has NIL rules. Um, it's kind of like a one pager. Yes, but FAMU has NIL rules, and that speaks to that, that, that athletes can do use NIL but cannot use the markings without the approval of the university president as well as university. So that's that's an av avenue that we will walk down as far as licensing is concerned because, yes, you can't just walk around and decide you're going to use the helmets or, you know, the logo on any type of merchandise, which is, also, which is why I'm, it goes back to having that name of your group and yeah. pushing the name of your group and the brand of your group as a as you're in our group as opposed to the actual markings and licensing um products of mm -hmm. university unless they are you have it in writing and approved that it's okay yeah. to be used there are some school I, I, I like there's there's a utah collective they use they use utah's everything and and obviously that speaks to synergy right we were talking yep. about being in, in in conjunction with each other that would show synergy so everybody doesn't do it. You don't really have to do it. There are ways to get around it. Um, but it, it is good if it can be used. Yeah. A lot of a uh, lot of differencing of opinions on the use of the foundation. I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, gonna, I ain't going to put all them comments out there. But boy, it's, a, yeah. it's just a, you, you just put that out there and all of a sudden it's like, oh, God, you know, it's uh, on both sides of the fence there. Um. Uh, another and I don't know whether maybe this speaks to you had already stated this, but maybe uh, Mr. Campbell's just getting in and heard it. Are we trying to create an NIL collective or a player stipend fund? He says those are those two are vastly different. Um, I'm not. We, we, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead, because I'm I'm not quite understanding the 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 player stipend fund with the angle that he's he's saying there. Uh, Right. So I would like to talk to Mr. Campbell, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm calling you out, Mr. Campbell. Let's have a conversation uh, because I know you're very valuable. Um, but as far as NIL is concerned, we would like to go in the direction of, of the likes of a collective. All right. I would like to learn more about a player stipend fund, um, get some more information. It, it might be an avenue to approach. But as of right now, the NIL group slash collective is the best I I had a conversation with a good friend of mine, uh, works in the HBCU spaces, uh, talks to a lot of schools, administrators. And as we were talking about collectives, we were talking about collectives supporting the athletic departments with their ability to uh, cover cost of attendance fees and the cost of attendance uh, numbers that's, that, that athletic programs can give to student athletes um i i don't know kelvin are we or ashley marcus you guys may be is fam you doing anything in regards to cost of attendance for student athletes right now i i have a thought no i i didn't think they were um which other schools do <laughs> yeah. so which, to your point Brian, which, it kind of puts, which actually when you think about cost of attendance if other schools are doing it then that kind of puts us in a position where we have to, you know, when we're recruiting and, and using different tools and whatever we do, that that's that's another form of being behind, not not offering something that somebody else might. And when we say other schools, we're talking about other schools in the SWAC. I'm not talking about, you know, schools that are in G5. So 
we have we have sister schools HBCUs that do that. But I I think that's above my pay grade as well. <laughs> and another component to that, and I think I just saw an article this week about a lawsuit where I think there was some type of academic um, piece. I know they made some legislation a couple of years ago. Yes, they did. Yep. And there was a lawsuit that came out within the last week or so of some student athletes um, suing for, I guess, for non-payment of rewards or not getting it because they met the criteria if the school said that they would get. So that's mm -hmm. another avenue through which funding. So there's the cost yes. of attendance piece. There's this academic enhancement piece that I think was up to a certain number per student athlete. I want to say 5,000 or something like that. And I, I had posted an article a couple of years ago, but I've forgotten about it. There's like all these things converging that somehow to get money to the athletes and we're working towards that, but you see how big of a gap it is between those that have and my personal belief have been doing a, a slow a long play power grab since the 1960s and 70s with the legislation integration tv money all that stuff and where we are and it just helps to proliferate that but that's another avenue where more money is getting to the student athlete that we have to compete against or at least answer questions about well um, i'm sorry no no go ahead ashley and and you you spoke to lawsuits. We there are there are a lot of legal things that come into play, with, whether it's on the side of protecting the universe, the athletic department, or protecting the athlete itself. Because if an athlete transfers, you know, or does not hold up their end of the bargain, the, this is legal legally binding contracts, right, or an agreement. So you just spoke to a lawsuit. Even something as far as one school now is getting. Um, has a lawsuit about because they don't feel like the, their that particular school's collective is uh, providing opportunities for women. So it speaks to the Title IX um, requirement, which I believe will help um, in in our regards or anybody's regards, as long as you kind of make sure you're providing opportunities for women, and and that speaks to it helps with the Title IX, which is important to us um, and to all athletic departments for that matter. So le legally, you have to be careful. And in more ways than one to make sure you aren't creating losses for yourself. The athletes aren't creating losses as well. And let and me ask a question, Brian. Excuse yeah. me, Brian. The NIL club for Florida a &M University football team. Are you familiar with that? I, who, me? Ashley. I'm familiar. Is that Ashley? Oh, oh am, I, am I or Brian? I don't know who, you, who you're asking. Ashley. Do Are I, you do I know who the... Do I know yes. who the individual is? Yes. Are you familiar I, with that? The individual okay. that's working that has been working with them. It's a little delayed. Yeah, I don't know. He, he's asking about the actual club itself because I, if I'm referring to oh, what club, club. that that what that is is a group that has I've seen this where several well there's almost like forty or fifty players in it. And like you donate to it, and I guess money gets distributed to various players. I, you know, yeah, I've heard of I've heard of it, but again, not not a whole lot of understanding of it. And that's again goes back to that whole. It's such a wide open market that there's so many spaces. Um, it's always good to get a centralized location while it does not require anybody to 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 like it and be a part of it. It kind of makes things less chaotic. Um, and it's then usually, party. like what you saw with Florida State, usually they combine. And even Colorado um, just did the same thing with theirs. They they start when it's two or three around here. They usually say, you know, it makes more sense to be together. But that that does take um, organization and working together and deciding that the effort is the overall effort and goal is more important than having three or four different groups or organizations. See that that's a third party group. Not different, you know, all these third party groups, influencer and all these companies yep. created these NIL. Uh, what's the word I'm going to call them? Platforms, uh, marketplaces. Platforms, right. To, to sort of, it, quote unquote, empower the student athlete. But it still right. relies on what? Us as alums, Us. you folks who are watching and listening as a, it still re requires you to go onto that platform mm -hmm. and support and donate, right? Right. And then you don't know 
where the money is. You don't know again it that we talked about that love offering. We don't know that that money is really going because I did the I looked at it in when I tried to do the math and, and what the goal like there there was a team goal of some number and then I looked at the number of guys signed up and I said well wait a minute hell that's like everybody getting enough for a Guthrie's box I mean there's really I mean what what happened the, the value didn't make sense to me if fifty guys signed up thirty five dollars yeah exactly y'all raised nine hundred yeah, bucks a month y'all could. Y'all could have y'all could have held a bucket out on the corner of Gaines and Wanish Way or something and made just as much money, you know, and, and right. not you know what I'm saying? So it's like that third party thing is out there and, and, and it speaks to guys being hungry mm -hmm. for something because they don't see anybody else doing anything. If Rattler right. Local Exchange is broken, if the athletic department isn't promoting it. How are how are alums how are alums supposed to know about it if it don't work a and b you don't know how it works and three it's never promoted. One thing for sure, there are, are there are so many third party companies that are out there in reference to, to, to nil. I, I don't necessarily, I can't speak to any one of them. I I personally purchased merchandise for from an athlete who who had a graphic t-shirt and some other merchandise from a third party company it had nothing to do with anybody related to family, but they obviously went and signed up on that, that platform and dispersed merchandise. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple from a third party standpoint. I can't say if that athlete got the return that they should have been getting, to be honest, I did it in support of the athlete in good faith that that platform would do right by the athlete. But I can assure you that there are many, 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 everybody has an NIO marketplace or platform that, that it doesn't take much as an athlete to sign up for. So that's the other part of it. All these different agreements are typically non-exclusive. So that means that you can go sign up with two different agents almost and have two different yeah. people chasing down deals for you. And it's just that that thing. It's, it almost feels like we're heading towards the professional, the way the athlete, professional athletes do it. But that's just how wide open it is in there. And it needs to be a trusted source in a central location where you can see the work and, and and we see Twitter. The, the students, athletes are gonna talk. Are gonna tell it. They're not yeah. gonna. They're not gonna yeah. let us get away with taking money for, on their behalf mm -hmm. and not giving it to them. Mm -hmm. They they don't mind speaking up. So those are the things that are like the proof in the pudding. Um, the content cr that'll be created, the businesses that'll be in partnership. It has to all flow because one thing Twitter will do is keep you honest yeah. in these days and times. And, and and just think about what you just said, right? We okay. had Naya Morgan on earlier. She's a grad student, right? She's playing softball. She's a grad student. I'm sure it's a lot. It's tedious. It's a lot of work, as she mm -hmm. just said. And now go tell that young lady, hey, when you sign up for this third party thing, oh, now you got to go spend time promoting it. <laughs> you got to spend time trying to get likes and followers. You got to put together content creations you got to put together flyers and all this other stuff I mean, that's time consuming if anybody's ever done content creation man that's, yeah. that stuff is time consuming and, and I'm glad. Mm -hmm. yeah and then so it's like so now you see why an agent is able to come in and say oh hey guys i'll do x y and z for you and here's my proven results right and right. then and then we'll start to do x y and z to get you your value why? Because you have value. Because you won a championship. Right. You were popular. Everybody wants. Everybody wants you because you are who you are and where you came from. You help fam. You succeed. You are part of the number one defense. Oh, hey, well, let's go. Let's go and help get you this X, Y, and Z deal. All right. And and one thing we have to do. You made me think about something. You said it's time consuming. Um, to be honest, everybody is not fit. Every athlete is not fit for NIL opportunities. Um, they can be because it takes a level of maturity. Um, getting NIL money, whether it's from a business sponsorship, whether it's from a collective group that wants, you know, for you to go out in the community, you have to, it's work. It is not just, hey, we paid you to play because that's not even, you know, legally correct anyway. So you have to vet out who these athletes are that, that receive this opportunity. You have to know what works for their personality. Some people like fishing, some people like video games. So you tailor it to what's important to them, maybe a, maybe a cause, maybe somebody's family member had breast cancer, there's a cause for you to kind of work with. But I said all that to say that athletes, the athletes that decide to endeavor and indulge in NIL in any form, 
need to understand number one you need to be marketable number two you need to make sure that and being marketable that on your social media page that is clean that you are engaging um with your followers and that a business just imagine what you place and what you put up there and and think about whether or not a, a mcdonald's will want to to be connected to you um so it's about how you carry yourself that's a character make sure you have high character just the same things it took to probably get your scholarship or a lot of the same things it will take um grades to be a part of any type of nil group and or receive um public um sponsorship from a business so every athlete if you got 15 basketball players all 15 very likely especially on our level may not receive any type of nil in the form of money it might be like sponsorship or merchandise exchange for services but that's something that we also have to consider that there are times when athletes don't follow the end of the bargain and then there's legal litigation so Yes, it's time consuming. You're already busy doing your work. And those are the things that we as the adults and the people who care need to help them stay in line with, with the development of it. What's your advice in terms to the athletes in terms of agents and folks coming to them about deals? Um, I actually, I don't necessarily necessarily think it's like agents just like a one-off situation. Maybe agent walks up to any one player and say, hey, I, I, I have something that might work for you. It is in some ways it's scary because these players are eager. So they just sometimes they just do things that, you know, like a younger brother or younger sister. And you're like, hey, you know, get some advice first. Uh, so it's always best for an athlete to have some level of representation, whether it's your own personal agent, because if an agent comes to you, then you can always say speak to my agent and my agent will bet that out. Um, if you're part of an NIO group, there's likely someone in the NIO group. That's if the athlete is making it clear that that's what's happening because we can only protect you as far as you allow us to. They're adults. They have autonomy to decide on what NIL opportunities that they can take. So it's a, it, 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 you have to be careful, but that's another thing to impress upon the athletes that nobody's here to take a deal away from you. Just let, let someone know who your mom, get a lawyer if you don't really want, you don't have any covering that can protect you from a random agent having a one-off opportunity for you that may look good on the front end, but may not end up being good on the back end. Boom. I'm done. <laughs> All right, Ashley. Uh, wow. This, I, this has been a also real informative uh, segment here. Uh, definitely gone uh, super long, but hopefully, hopefully we've shined or shined a light on an area of need and also hopefully got people excited about what's to come. I want to give you the last mm -hmm. word to, to uh, kind of put that out there or, or, or put whatever out there there is. And uh, if maybe even if you want to put a contact info, how can people contact you if they have questions? Well, I'm, I'm actually actively on Twitter. So that's probably the DM is, 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 is easy on Twitter. Um, and if and if we don't follow each other, I don't Well, my page is open. So you should be able to message me easily if there's anyone. And um, my name is Ash A.S.H. Loves L.U.V. Sports um, on Twitter. That's a form of, of contact if you would like to do so. Um, and, you know, in closing, I hope that this this time that we spent tonight has kind of brought some truths to the light, you know, dispel some rumors, maybe give it some comfortability. And if, and if it's someone who is still uncomfortable, that's okay too, because there's more information to come. Um, there is more to see and you don't have to be rushed to be comfortable, right? Nobody in anything you do, you don't have to be rushed to be comfortable. You may not get comfortable. Um, in month one, it may take you month six and that's okay because we'll likely be here. So I, like I said, in a nutshell, be on the lookout um, if you are interested in, in in giving towards this love offering <laughs> that that we are we have are working on to put together. Please send me a DM, Twitter, a Twitter DM because I am in active conversations um, with individuals who are interested. I I, I want to trust me. I'm not making this up. There are people who are interested in our athletes and our and our name. We are fam you like y'all 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 do know we're fam you like people want to be connected to us and sometimes we get. I don't know. We get that that thing of a lot. Oh, we're fam. You Florida State's down the street, and they're bigger, and they have these things. But it's not true. It's not true at all. I have a I have a gentleman. And I'm not going to go too far with this, but there's someone who really, an organization that really wants to work with us. And once we get it going, you'll see it, and it'll work in the favor. And I was I'm going to be honest. I was shocked too. I was like, oh, okay, you know. 
But believe it or not, there are people who want to work with our athletes. There are people who want to be connected. Um, and it's okay if you're not comfortable tonight. It is 100% okay. No, there's no pressure to be involved. Um, the work will get done and you can join in when you're ready. Simple as that. And if you have questions, please ask. And also I wanted to ask, and I know Ashley and I have talked, that once the launch comes back, that we have you come back and give additional details as you're allowed to. You know, because I know right now it's still in that almost ready yeah, to launch, yeah. but not quite reveal phase. But after mm -hmm. things are launched to come back and give us recap, give us insight on where things stand and a little bit more detail on how folks can participate in the different avenues that it presents. Absolutely. I would, I would love to return. Um, I'll even give you all a segment if you want me to. Every other week, I'll come in here and talk about what you want me to talk about with NIL. <laughs> I like that. Hey, I like we, that. We, we love it. We love it. Uh, again, that's uh, at Ash Love Sports, L-U-V Sports. That's if you want to reach out to her uh, via uh, Twitter. Um, and um, good stuff. Well, glad... Glad you are glad. Uh, glad you're part of the uh, the ONG Strike Zone family. Family. Thank uh, you. Thank you for welcoming me. Friend, friend, official friend of the show going forward from here on out. <laughs> uh, you know this. This is great, man. I know we we've been talking about this, and so uh, we're excited. And and so I yeah. mean, yeah. Th this is this is good. It's it's time. It, it's, it's time. time. It's time, and, it, and it'll come. And I, every time I see someone mention NIL or any one of our platforms, I just start to get the itch. Like, oh my god, I, I just want to say so much because I want to want to relieve everyone. I want to dispel the rumors. I want to make everybody comfortable, and because I know and I believe how this works. But but in due time, we will, we will see the fruits of the labor. All right, uh, Ashley C. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for uh talking with us this will be a great segment uh i'm gonna have to make sure to clip this as its own little thing because i think there's a there's a lot of stuff here for people to chew on and go back and watch so um appreciate your time tonight ashley thank and, you uh, i appreciate you all for having me on yeah thank you all right be well we'll talk soon definitely talk to you soon all right Woo. good stuff man yeah that's some exciting stuff um all right ah smack a couple other things that i i wanted to uh tell you about here as we get ready to wind down the show um <laughs> oh look i heard it with, i heard it i'm with you marcus <laughs> and i know there may be some segments that get cut short but um I might not want to talk recruiting, but you know, I got my list. I like to put something a little more visual together. If you, well, yeah, because I, next, next 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 week is going to be a football show because you know the you know the spring game will be coming up and everything, and we've got some guests lined up. So we'll we'll just roll if if that's okay. We'll just roll all that recruiting and everything into that uh, football show next week. Yeah. yeah. Um uh do me a favor. I need to I need to pull something up here. Can you talk about the uh Kelvin, can you bring up the uh the track and field golf tennis players of the week? Can you um can you make can mention of that? I I'd hate for these slides that I made to go to waste. Oh no. <laughs> Um, and I, I wanted to, I know if you wanted to get to, uh, if you want to start with checking track and field, um, while you're doing that, um, I'm going to put real quick while, while he's doing that, um, uh, those of you who catch our show on Sunday, uh, me and AD drew another rattler, uh, he's, he's, uh, sponsoring or helping a former player of his a young lady by the name of Morgan Hunter. She's in a, I guess a contest called America's favorite teacher. Um, 
And so you essentially can go to the link that I'm going to put in the chat. And uh, by going to that link, you can support uh, or vote for Morgan. And I'll just quickly do a screen share here so you can kind of see who she is. If this works. So again, uh, here's the website. If you go to that link that I just put in the chat, uh, the contest called America's Favorite Teacher, Morgan Hunter is the young lady's name, a former player of our uh, of our very own A.D. Drew. Um, I forgot the school. I know some of you who voted, some of you who are on Sunday show, you already voted. I appreciate you can vote again. Uh, so um, as you can see, she... She was in second place. I know when we did the show Sunday, she shot up to first place, and now she's down to third. So somebody must have caught wind of the promotionals stuff that we were doing <laughs> and kind of countered it. But uh, if you all would uh, just you know show some love to a fellow uh, HBCU grad, um, uh, Morgan Hunter. Uh, I forgot which school she went to. I know if I don't know if AD still watching the show. Or if he's got it in there. If any of you guys, you guys remember, I know Tamara T, you guys were, you voted. If you recall, I don't know if it, if it's on here, I'm going to scroll down and just look. Uh, so the final, the final uh, cut line is tomorrow at seven o'clock. So any of you who go and vote today, tonight, it'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, she's a first year teacher. Um, and so she's doing something that she loves doing. Um, which is teaching young people. So we want to encourage that. And so your support will be greatly appreciated. All right. All right. All right. What I'm going to just run. I'm going to just run down the list. I'm not going to do accolades because we, we got to keep this show moving. <laughs> so golfer of the week. FAMU Rattler Marcus Teller. He's the swag golfer of the week. Great name. Marcus is a great name. Um, the track. You're not, gonna say what he, you're not gonna say what he did? No, I told you we gotta keep it moving. It's All right. late. Well, there you go. <laughs> so men's outdoor track and field athlete of the week, co track athlete of the week, Joseph DeRosier helps the relays in Gainesville. I'm not going to give times and all that. The uh, SWAC tennis player, women's tennis player of the week. Well, stay in the stay in the track. Stay in that. We had a women. We had a woman. All right, man. Uh, I'm woman, just saying, if you will stick with the sport, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at the SWAC page all oh, right i thought you were looking at the notes the show notes is right there no no together. no i'm looking oh, at the swag page right, so Brian, but with you you off so, but go ahead so so brianna brown marshall show <laughs> brianna brown marsh is the women's outdoor track and field athlete of the week in the fields yes so the roser and then brianna brown marshall and this is what about the fourth time, probably for both of them. Yeah. Between indoor and outdoor, if not more. Right. Yeah. Okay. Then we have the women's tennis player of the week, Swack, and that's our freshman. Uh, was it Larissa Silva? Larissa Silva. Larissa Silva. Okay. I think she was a late signing, if I remember correctly. If I remember um, Coach Nikki. And they only have two, I think, two meets left before the SWAT championship. And they have undefeated Alabama State coming up in uh, at home. Ooh. I don't know if it's this week or the following week, but they come in here. And if they win, it'll be a three-way tie between them, Jackson State, who we lost to early in the season. And Jazz State lost to Alabama State. So that's going to be a big meet. I mean, uh, a tennis match. 
with uh, uh, that the tennis team we have coming up, by the way. And yeah, then so- I, we talked about the softballs, uh, Zoriana Hughes and baseball, Caleb Granger, both pitchers of the week for the SWAC. So every sport that we participate in at FAMU, we have pretty much a SWAC athlete of the week. And we're also in the top two, three in, in all our, our sports, if if not number one. So our spring boards, our, our spring sports are absolutely getting it done. And Kevin, I think we're playing, looking at the tennis schedule now, we're playing Prairie View this Friday in Baton Rouge. Is that a makeup? I think that is a makeup for something. It is a makeup. makeup, yeah. And then we play Alabama State Sunday at our place. And I'm assuming that was regularly scheduled. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't think make up. And then the SWAC championships on the 19th, which I guess that's not quite two weeks. Yeah, about a two week, maybe 10 day break, 10, 12 day break. Right. So we could essentially, so what you were saying, we could essentially force a three way tie for the one seed, or I don't even know, it'd be co regular season champs. But obviously, we have to beat Prairie View. And we have to beat Alabama State, who's unbeaten. Right. Um, Jackson State has one loss, which came to Alabama State. Of course, Jackson State beat us. So, you know, if we win our last two and Jackson State does beat Alcorn, it'll be one of those funky triangles of we beat them, they beat us, and we beat them or something like that. So... I don't know what the tiebreaker is. Maybe Coach Nikki, we'll have, to, we'll have to. I guess we'll have to wait to see, or maybe she knows and will let us know. So, uh, yeah. But that that, and then like you said, golf. Uh, I showed the graphic. It's coming up next weekend. I think the fifteenth through the seventeenth. Flowood, uh, Mississippi. Yeah. And uh, the April, yeah, uh, April 17th through the 19th, uh, golf is uh, finishing up at the in Nashville at the Big Blue Invitational, April 8th and the 9th. And then they have the SWAC championship. Uh, track is off until April 12th through the 13th when they'll be at Gainesville at the Tom Jones Memorial. So golf is off. I mean, uh, track and field is off this weekend. And then they're back on the on the ground uh and and feel they're back on the on the meet they got to meet again however you want however you want to say it i can't really say that right uh april 12th but big weekend alabama state coming in town for baseball coming in town for softball and coming in town for tennis so mm-hmm. very rare that we get three sports one school so it'll be a big it should be a lot of alabama state fans in tallahassee so we got to make sure to show up in Tala in uh, Tallahassee, show up at uh, at our fields, and uh, let's support and uh, let's keep the winning going. All right, thank I guess. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, yes. Thank you to uh, Naya Morgan, uh, yes. our softball Iron Woman, uh, of course, catcher uh, of FAMU softball. We appreciate her for coming on, and we thank uh, thank Ashley. Coleman, Ashley C. Ash loves sports. Ash L U V Sports on Twitter is where you can find her. Thank her for coming on as well and uh, sharing with us some some great news about a forthcoming NIL group supporting FAMU initiatives, FAMU athletics, and FAMU student athletes. Uh. What quick, else you got? Well, I was going to say a quick teaser, I guess, for next week. Well, we've made a lot of offers in the last week and a half, 10 days. Heavy on the defensive line. I want to say at least double digit. Yeah. The majority of them from the JUCO ranks. Some are bounce back. So the last school was a junior college, but some of them are bounce backs from group of five. So we've probably at least offered at least oh, 10. 10 defensive linemen and we thought we figured this would happen because we saw the the number of seniors that we had and graduate students along the defensive line this past year so this was delayed but expected 
for whatever reason, you know, we thought there was going to be an onslaught of defensive line offers. And we've already had a couple folks that not from the new offers, but just over the early signing period in early spring had a couple defensive line and commitments that we already talked about in previous weeks. The other thing, I guess we want to get in more detail next week, but just, I know folks, at least I've seen a couple of tweets worried about the onslaught of players from FAMU, those who are graduate level, who have jumped in the portal recently, like within the last couple of days or so, you know, starting, uh, I guess, General Hunt maybe two weeks ago, then Sharif Say, and then today we had Alan Smith Jr. jump back in the portal after he, the you know, he jumped in right after the celebration bowl and then came back Wilson. to fame and then Deco Wilson. And just, well, I'll just say this. There seems to be a pattern. <laughs> if you look at their Twitter follows, they seem to kind of converge on one or two people that seem to be influencing things. And, I, and that's kind of the question I asked earlier to the team and to Ashley as it relates yeah. to going to professional model. And even two years ago, when we talked to uh, Coach Hugh from Grambling when he first took the job in class of 2022, a signing day show that indications are that like Ashley said and others have said this is the wild wild west the agents NIL agents are getting involved and do we need to have or can you have people on the school's behalf or some other means to I don't want to say negotiate per se, but it, it, it's looking very much like a professional sports model. And it seems like it's getting to that point. And I know for Florida in and of itself, I've looked at it. We've looked at it the last couple of years when they started moving the high schools to where they relaxed the transfer rules. College transfer rules are relaxed. Now you introduce NIL in a college in some states across the U.S. are introducing NIL in high school level. So you have to buckle up. But yeah, but and, and to add to that, Marcus, championship programs, guys getting drafted or making NFL rosters, mm -hmm. pro teams coming and watching your athletes, general managers included. So just like when the whole agent being a registered NFL agent because there were some shadow people out there that were uh, taking advantage of the situation. That's kind of how I see the potential of NIL right now. We got a lot of winning programs and kids making squads are getting looked at. So I have that same concern. I want to make sure I, I that, you know, we got to have these opportunities, but I, I want as best as possible to put in, you know, have something in place where we can kind of protect our student athletes, you know, and and not have just this free agent out there that's got kids jumping in the portal thinking they're gonna get some, and then you know leaving them out to dry, especially since they love FAMU. Mm -hmm. And the, and even Coach Rice, when he was on a couple of weeks ago, he said he had two people leave the golf team last year, and I don't know, I can't remember. I have to go back and look at the show if he mentioned it was NIL related. And I'm like, golf NIL? I mean, of course, you know, golf. <laughs> brings in a lot at the professional level brings in a lot of revenue but i think there were two if i remember correctly he said at least two players left the team and that was his first instance of someone leaving the team and i don't recall if it was uh nil related but there's there's some things that we're gonna have we as famu yeah. and we as hbcus are gonna have to adjust to because yes. these are things that we're not accustomed to dealing with as it relates to roster management and competing from a, a financial standpoint in dealing yeah. with someone who's a third party working on the behalf of a player and putting demands on either the team or the DSOs in order to retain that player. Or we have someone else at another school that is willing to X, give X or provide X. Do you, you know, it, it sounds like it's, it's getting to that point instead of way of the world and it is free market you know but now we have to deal with the free market so it's it's evolved evolved beyond that yeah you know what it's funny you talked about that pro model what's one of the hardest things that we see pro sports teams that win a championship do keep their players keep their team keep their together players. 
in that in that in that in that in that scene to be what's happening at the college level now now that you have this free marketplace now right nil transfer portal we've heard people talk about colleges starting to look like the pro game guess what you got you got the same thing happening in college sports and it's happening in football. It's happening in basketball, men and yeah. women's, yes. <laughs> you know, basketball. Uh, so, yeah, retaining players and bringing in new players. It's a it's a I do see why some schools started bringing in uh, people like you said, Marcus, to help manage that, because it's not just you can't you know, you used to just have to recruit to bring in new talent. Now you have to recruit to keep guys. You got to recruit the transfer portal and you have now you have to also recruit. So now you instead of just one, now you're recruiting three different groups now. The current players, players in the portal and high school players. Mhm. Mm and you, I mean it's looking like the professional model because now you have to deal with roster management. You have to have someone, not just in your recruiting coordinator, whoever that happens to be, and I'm speaking just generally not for FAMU, has to look at the free agent market yep. and high school talent. And the free agent market can be broken down into junior colleges, uh, any of the any levels of talent that you have, whether it be uh, Division One FBS, and that includes Power Five, Group of Five, Division two, we've had success there with some Division two players. You think Bishop Bonnet and a couple of others, even NAIA, someone who may break through. So you have to keep all those avenues open. So you're, you're developing, I don't know to what degree, and I, I think I just saw something else where the NCAA was looking at some rules that might expand the number of coaches or the roles or include some roles outside of the 11 that were mandated to have something along those lines. So it's like you have to develop almost a professional level staff or have analyst roles in order to manage all the things that would continue the success of a college program beyond that's even different from what was 10 years ago. And let me just add one more thing. You, you definitely better with the kids you already have on campus, the student athletes, you better do what you say you was going to do. Right. You better make sure that their experiences are what they should be that they given their 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 scholarship dollars on time or any stipends that their meal plans are in place. Um, that's going to be vitally important in today's free market that the things you can control, you do control, along with the other things. Yep. Uh, it's a different day and age. And if you if you uh if you needed any more convincing that the the old ways of thinking about college athletics is those days are gone and it's 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 now we have to re refocus re, re you know you got to keep up you got to keep up somehow some way and uh the, the, i think there's enough people who want to do that and uh educating educating the masses is going to be key Yep. All right. Great show. Great informative oh. show. Uh, hopefully everybody, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up button, if you're watching on YouTube, you will do that. Helps the algorithms there. If you're on Facebook, hit the like button. You can do that as well. Um, please make sure to share the show with a friend. A. B. Make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at ONG Strike Zone. And then C. Go download the BCSN Pod Zone, the podcast. All of our shows are available on the podcast format. For those of you who like, you know, Spotify, iHeartRadio, while you're jogging, while you're at work, Amazon Music even, uh, our show is available in podcast format on all of those platforms. Uh, it'll be up sometime tomorrow, My, maybe tonight, but definitely by tomorrow, you can download BCSN Pod Zone all of the shows that are part of the Black College Sports Network. Uh, all right, that's going to do it for tonight. Uh, appreciate again, Naya Morgan, Ashley Coleman for uh, coming in and talking with us. 
Uh, have a great weekend if you're going up to uh, Tallahassee or if you're going to be in Tallahassee supporting softball, supporting baseball, supporting tennis. Uh, please do so. Be loud. Be proud. Wear orange and green. And let's make sure we can swat down the Hornets and send them back up to uh, Montgomery with some with some L's, just like we did Jackson State. Send them out of there with some L's. Send them out with some L's. Fama Bama, baby. Fama Bama. Right. Send them, send them back to our, our second home state. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, for Marcus Green, Kelvin Rozier, I'm Brian Fulford. Rattler Nation, thank you. Be strong. Be proud. Fangs up. And make sure to strike, strike, and strike again. Peace out, everybody. You show? Sure? Oh, my God.